Happy Monday. On today's episode of the John Campy Show podcast, what were the best non-movie trailer Super Bowl commercials? Also, that Captain America 4 movie is coming up, and there may be the most significant piece of evidence that Harrison Ford may indeed be Red Hulk in that. We're going to discuss that. Also, Disney has been putting into theaters those films that got put straight to streaming during the pandemic. Luca, Soul, Turning Red, but they're not doing great at the box office. Was it a mistake for Disney to put them there? Also, what were the best trailers at the Super Bowl? And of course, we're going to talk about... Deadpool 3, now known as Deadpool and Wolverine's trailer drop. We're going to discuss that and a whole bunch more. The John Campy Show podcast starts right now. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best damn movie related show on the planet Earth, the John Campy Show podcast. Coming to you from right here in our quaint little studio, brought to you in part by our friends, at Mint Mobile. I'm, of course, your host, John Campia, and it is an awesome honor and privilege, as it is every day, to have you, our international friends, gather around as we talk about our favorite things in the world, movies and movie news, TV and streaming, and all sorts of good stuff, not just giving you our opinions, but hopefully giving you some information and context so you guys can form your own well-informed opinions, whether they're the same or even a bit different than ours. Uh, Joining me in studio today, we got Ray Ora. Who day? Jonathan Boyko's here. Who dat? <laughs> Writer, director, producer, Mr. Robert Meyer Burnett. Who dem? <laughs> and most importantly, you guys are here. Thank you so much for being here and making this show part of your day. And here's how today's show is going to go. We're going to start off by talking about those topics I listed off. And then we're going to take your live comments and questions. Now, if you guys have a thought, comment, theory, question, observation that you'd like us to address on the show, go ahead and use the Super Chat feature in the live chat. It is open right now, but we're only going to leave it open for a little while longer so you can get those questions in quickly, and then we'll address those as long as they're appropriate to be read on the show at or near the end of the show. Also want to remind you guys that this is primarily a podcast for those of you watching this on YouTube. So why don't you make sure you go over to your to your uh, podcasting service of choice and subscribe to our John Campus Show podcast. It's an audio-only feed of the show. Great for when you're at the gym, commuting, at work, whatever. Go and subscribe to the podcast so it is there when you need it. All right, guys. That all down. We're going to talk about some Super Bowl stuff. I got, I, I listen. This isn't a sports show, but before we get into the topic, just let me point out, <laughs> the 49ers gave that game away. They gave it away. I was, I was telling the guys, for, like Kyle Shanahan is a great coach. He's a great coach, all right? He is. But the 49ers, with the game tied, had the ball in field goal range with under two minutes left, Kansas City had already burned one of their timeouts. He only had two timeouts left. It was third and four. And I said to everybody in the room, well, they're going to run the ball because Christian McCaffrey's been getting four, five, six, seven yards pretty consistently. But even if you don't get the first down, you're going to burn 40 more seconds off the clock or force Kansas City to burn one of their only two remaining timeouts left. You're going to be, even if you don't get the first down, you're going to be able to kick the field goal, You're going to give them the ball back with less than a minute to go. And what happened? They threw the ball. Incomplete. The clock stops. Now you gave 40 more seconds, and Kansas only was able to tie the game with nine seconds left in the game. San Francisco would have won the game. All on a brain freeze that instead of running the ball, which I know that is something as a Seattle Seahawks fan is a phrase that you had, you know, you that had is to bring that up. You. Why didn't you run the ball? You had to bring it up. Don't you know this is all part of just a plot to That's right. elevate to elevate Taylor Swift to God status? That's right. So the she can come out for and, a fluke punt to go off the back of a guy's ankle. That was all, dude. It's all controlled by the elites to raise Taylor Swift up. It's well, it's a Hollywood speaking drama. Of which, though, to control us all. Anne was so excited, my wife. Because she loves the Kelsey brothers and and all that kind of stuff. So excited that she booked her tickets for Disneyland today because that's where the Super Bowl champions go. So Anne's at Disneyland right now trying to see if she can spot a glimpse of uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. God Emperor Swift. God Emperor Swift. That's what it is. By the way, I I was joking about it, but I I couldn't help but put this up on my Facebook post, uh, uh, my Facebook profile last night. Super Bowl appearances since 1996. Cowboys zero, Taylor Swift one. Just <laughs> love that one. And believe me, as a Toronto Maple Leaf fa- 
fan, I feel your pain, Cowboy fans. I feel your pain. All right. With that down, guys, how to get... I've been venting on that. I've been mad about that all night. Anyway, let's move on now to our first topic here, shall we? And it's about the Super Bowl. Of course, no. one of the big reasons that a lot of people watch the Super Bowl, why people who are not even sports fans or football fans will tune in and watch the Super Bowl is for the Super Bowl commercials. As movie fans, we tune in to see which trailers we'll play. But a lot of people just want to see the regular commercials because often the best commercials of the year come out during the Super Bowl. And this year did not disappoint. There were some great, great commercials during the Super Bowl. And we're not going to go over all of them, but I thought we would take a second here and talk about what were our favorites. All right, now I got my one favorite, but let's talk about some of the good ones. The Michael Sarah commercial. <laughs> what was the name? What's the name of the product? Sarah V. Sarah, Sarah V. Or Sarah v. v. Sarah There's v. a legitimate oh, yeah. moisturizing cream called Sarah V. And they got Michael Sarah doing this commercial. We'll call, it's Sarah V. Let my cream moisturize you. And all. It was. It's transcendent. I, it was <laughs> hilarious. Alert, dude. I never even heard of this product, and now I will never forget this product. No. It was absolutely hairless, top notch, well, well done. I wish we could hear the story of when Michael Sarah got the call from his agent explaining there's this company and what that how that conversation right. went. I mean, all the biggest stars do Super Bowl commercials now. Like a lot of times there are stars so big that you don't think we'll do a commercial for a product. But at Super Bowl, it's all bets off. A good example of that was the Christopher Walken commercial. That was, I mean, they gave us a little sneak peek of it, about 10 seconds of it a while back. But and what was it for Lincoln? BMW. BMW. I knew it was a car company. See, that's why the commercial isn't so good is I couldn't even remember the product. The Michael Sarah one, I'll always remember the product. But this trailer, it was, it was great. It was clever. The one with, what's the name of the girl from Parks and Rec? Oh, Aubrey um, yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza. Plaza. It's good too. That Aubrey Plaza and then Nick Offerman pops up at the end as they're flying on the dragons. <laughs> that was spectacular. The Arnold Schwarzenegger one. Good neighbor. Neighbor. That's what I said, neighbor. And, and I just about died. Like the commercial itself is funny. But then when they cut to Danny DeVito saying good neighbor and then Arnold Schwarzenegger turns and says, you're a backstabber. And Danny DeVito says, no, I'm a backstabber. I, I just about died. I mean, and just seeing the two of them together on screen is awesome. But I'm going to tell you, I want to ask your favorite one, Rob, in a second. But I'm going to tell you what my favorite one was. Okay. By a mile. The back screen gives it away. The Dunkin' Dogs. <laughs> the oh. Dunkin' Donuts commercial is one of the best Super Bowl commercials I have ever seen. I would agree with that. <laughs> First of all, you got... Brad Pitt and J Lo in there together. Oh, you mean and uh, like ben and I Affleck. don't know that was, what's that Ben Affleck. What did oh, I say? Oh wait, wait, wait. Was Brad Pitt in that commercial? Did I say Brad? Pitt? Yeah, he said yeah. Brad Pitt. I'm sorry. I'm getting my whoops. My <laughs> so Ben Affleck walks in. Wait a minute. Was Brad Pitt in that commercial? <laughs> ben Affleck walks in, and J Lo's in there. First of all, he's sitting in the car, and I don't know. Was, that wasn't Casey, was it? In the car with him? Uh, no, that? no, no. That was that rapper. Uh, he's in White Men Can't Jump. Yeah, oh, yeah. right, right, right. For a second, because he looked a little bit like Casey Affleck. Yeah. I, did, I didn't remember. That would have been great. Saying, dude, don't do this. What? She came oh, to Jack my Harlow. work. Jack Harlow, yeah. She Jack came Harlow. to my work. I got to show her what's up. And he walks in, and like JLo just looks mortified. And he comes in, what's up? And he's got Tom Brady DJing. <sighs> got my partner. And Matt Damon's like, I'm so sorry about this. Which was, <laughs> was just hilarious they do the whole routine it's like let's go on the track j-lo we discuss this and they walk out and like as they're walking down say i love matt damon's line remember when i said i would do anything for you this is anything <laughs> it's like it's one of the best commercials for a super bowl i had ever seen i absolutely i don't even like dunkin donuts but now i might go to dunkin donuts and grab a couple of donuts and just you, to support them and you know what you order when you go there no idea the french cruller is that what it's called that, that one's so good. I'm sorry. I'm a donut. I'm not a donut a, guy, so I it don't is know. Good. But I, I will say, I will say, little Duncan plug. Okay, one when we worked out of your place in Burbank, I would stop there and like bring like donut holes or whatever. Oh yeah, because that Duncan was right up the right street. down the street. Right. But also when we worked in Hollywood at the Stream, 
I would pick up Ray at that corner so we'd get some donkeys on the way to the Hollywood <laughs> studio. That was our everyday uh, routine. Um, so, Rob, let's go over to you. Which commercial stood out? I have to you? say that the I, I really did like the Christopher Walken one because it was classy and yet funny at the same time. But what killed me, I don't know why this killed me, is Chris Pine is the VO guy for yeah. the ultimate driving machine. And he's after you've watched this, he tries to play it straight. And then even he, in his voiceover, goes into a Walken impression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just thought that, that it, was, it, was a, it was beautifully shot. And I think that was my favorite, but my second favorite was definitely the Dunkin' Donuts commercial. And by the way, I've loved this entire campaign because remember he had the Ice Spice uh, commercial that he directed that he was in for Dunkin' when he's sitting across from her. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that one. Oh, it, it was about six months ago. And I love that because they've got him to direct it. And, and it just goes back to their whole Boston roots and to see Damon in this and to see Tom Brady in it. I mean, to me, it looks like that I'm sure when Dunk, it's the same thing. I always, I always think to myself, how do these celebrities get involved in these commercials? And I'm sure that somebody tried, somebody came up to Ben Affleck, maybe it was his agent or something. And Ben Affleck says, no, 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 no. I got this. <laughs> Whatever they want, let me take care of it all. And he's just having a blast. And this was the ultimate example of, because it's not just a commercial. I mean, he's doing something fun that he's proud of. And this was hilarious. Yeah. I mean, to me, they could make a whole movie. If you watch the Ice Spice commercial, that was hilarious too. And she was, of course, at the game. Oh, yeah, the, with... the lemon lime soda one. Yeah, yeah. That was funny. It was funny. That and was I funny. was expecting them to do some time because, like, Ice Spice was, you know, looking a little you know a little crazy in that in the box but i figured that they would t i just love i would watch the ben affleck dunkin donuts movie if they did a movie like air but about dunkin donuts but it was like a really funny like like a tropic thunder about dunkin donuts i'd watch it i can't believe you guys didn't bring up bring up Pickle Babies. That was my favorite one. Which one was Pickle Babies? The E-Trade with the babies playing tennis. Oh, oh yeah. playing Pickleball. Yeah, that, pickleball. You know what else was another good one? Because that was a good one. The Beyonce one, trying to break the internet. That was funny, too. How did you get Beyonce to be to be in your ad campaign? Um, there is also the Uber Eats had at, like a lot of stars, too. Yeah. It wasn't just the Friends uh, cast, but it had... Uh, uh, what's his name? Soccer player. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, oh, the beer no, commercial. No, 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 messy. messy. The no, Messy beer No, no, commercial. no, but even in the Uber Eats was... Uh, Oh, uh, the guy married and... the Spice Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Beckham. David Beckham, Beckham right. Yeah. That was good. And Chris Pine had a commercial, too. But I'm try I'm freezing what it was for. He was wearing the mustache. Oh, Pringles. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pringles right. Pringles. No, 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 no. Chris Pratt. Chris, Chris, yeah, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Did Chris I say the wrong Chris? Pine. Yeah, Chris. Well, I just Pine said Chris Pine. He's BMW. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Yeah. He's he, BMW. Did, he did the mustache thing. I really like that one, actually, too. I mean, there were a lot of really, really good ones. It, it was a great night. I didn't see a single... Well... There were one or two that I watched, and I can't even remember what they were, which is a good sign that it wasn't very good, because they do something, 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 and then the product doesn't even get mentioned until the very end. It's like, what was that about? But for the most part, I thought the commercials were great. Yeah. I thought they did a really good, and they better be great, because they were spending $7 million for a 30-second spot. So you better make it good. 30 seconds. For seven million dollars, I've always been told that's what I could get as a male prostitute, but uh, you know, I I chose a different career path. There's seven still time. Million dollars still time. for thirty seconds. Anyway, uh, it's good. That's about as much as I last. Anyway, anyway, guys, with that <laughs> down, let's move on to the next topic here, shall we? Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> In the world of the cinematic universe, of course, one of the Marvel movies we have coming up, not named Deadpool, is Captain America 4. Now, there's been a lot of speculation that Harrison Ford, who is both going to be... Now, of course, he took over for, for William Hurt um, in uh, the MCU. And he's going to be in both Captain America 4 as Thunderbolt Ross and in Thunderbolts as Thunderbolt Ross. And there's been a lot of speculation that because it, it does happen in the comics that he's going to be Red Hulk. Now, I, I've always said that's definitely possible because it is something that happens in the comics, but I don't think that's the way they're going to go. I mean, nobody told me that wasn't the way they were going to go, but I've always kind of said, I, I mean, they could, but I don't think that's what they're going to do. Well, maybe they are because new pictures have emerged of 
the, first of all, let's look at this picture. This is one of the crew jackets for the crew working on Captain America Brave New World. Right? And it's yellow, so clearly Wolverine's in this too. There's yellow. Oh, that's right. The shirt. <laughs> Just kidding. That means Wolverine <laughs> yeah, must, must be. be in it. So there's that. But on the other side of the jacket was this. The Captain America shield with a big hulking hand. Red hulking <clears throat> hand. Now, some people mentioned it could be the return of the Red Skull. That's a classic Captain America villain. Maybe the Red Skull returns and now taking on the new cap, possibly. But obviously what a lot of people are jumping to understandably here is that it's Red Hulk. Now, <clears throat> the, the problem I still have with the idea of it being Red Hulk is what on earth does Sam Wilson do against a Red Hulk? I mean, that's if Red Hulk is the villain. I mean, he might be a good guy. Right? They, they could use him as a hero character in this. Maybe, I guess. But if he's the villain, what on earth does Sam Wilson do against Red Hulk? Nothing. There's nothing Sam Wilson can do against Red Hulk. Unless, you know, they're buddies. So, I mean, they might have a really good plot device, though. But at any rate, I got to say, I have this image for me, if it's legit, and now apparently it's legit, but I cannot verify the veracity of the image. But from what we're hearing, it's legit. Okay, so let's just operate on that assumption for a moment, keeping in mind that maybe it's not legit, but let's let's go with this for a minute for the sake of the discussion. This one image has taken me from going, I mean, he could be Red Hulk, but I kind of doubt it, to, well, it kind of looks like maybe he's going to be Red Hulk. Now, Harrison Ford, some of you may have seen this interview, going back to when Indiana Jones was coming out, an interviewer asked him about Red Hulk, and he literally said, what's a Red Hulk? What's, well, like, what is that? <laughs> and he, like, yeah. whether he was pretending ignorance or literally had no idea what Red Hulk was. So that's a little something to keep in mind. But, Rob, this image has swayed me a little bit. So, number one, let me ask you the question. <clears throat> Do you think this is a, 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 at least partially some evidence that suggests this is going to be Red Hulk? And would it be a good idea to have Red Hulk? How do you see it? I think... It definitely could be Red Hulk. You know, where there's smoke, there's fire. But I hope that it's true for no other reason than you just brought up. I would pay good money. Look at that image. Uh, it looks great. <laughs> I would pay good money to watch Harrison Ford go on late night talk shows and answer questions about Thunderbolt Ross becoming Red Hulk. <laughs> Just to that would see, be great. just to see his responses, and after he has to talk about this, because you know it'd all be CG anyway, so it's not like it would be part of his repertoire as an actor. You know, I'm sure he added his voice to it or whatever. But I, I think that that's why I believe that when someone says, "What is the Red Hulk?" Of course, he's going to say, I, "I don't even know what that is," because he wouldn't know what it is. He wouldn't know what it is even if he did motion capture for Red Hulk. <laughs> He wouldn't know what it is, and it would be What fantastic. am I doing this for? Don't worry, Harrison. Uh, it, yeah, see, it, it would see. just be the greatest thing ever. Um, but no, I mean, I mean, look, one of the fun things that's always been fun about the MCU is how, the, how they've woven in storylines from the comics, and of course they've adapted them, you know, and Sam Wilson wearing this suit, and we know he has a different suit even, uh, is right out of the comics, you know, and so is Red Hulk, and so is Thunderbolt Ross becoming Red Hulk, so why not? You know, I, for me, I just hope when I hear the problem with Red Hulk, and I have this problem with the MCU in general, is what made the MCU so good when it first started was it was relatively grounded. Right. You know, and the more they lean into the TVA and all these different, the multiverse is not grounded. The multiverse is comic book tropes and sci-fi and all that. So the real world kind of gets left behind. And I think the more the MCU does that, it gets less interesting for audiences. Is, is it fair to say that when the MCU not only first started, but was really rolling, it was for everybody? Yes. And then in recent years, 100%. They've made it more inside baseball for only the hardcore geeks, which, which has kind of hurt it. Uh, it completely hurt it, especially general audiences vaguely know because there's been shows that deal with the multiverse. But he who remains and, and Kang and all this. No one, no one knows who that is. People understood who Thanos was because he was a big hulking purple guy who said purple in, he said in the screen and said, "If you want to do something right, you do it yourself." Everybody gets that. Yeah. Everybody understands that. 
nobody understands what's going on now, which is why I think interest in the MCU from general audiences has waned. Let me ask you this too. So let's let's go into the assumption that it is Red Hulk. Red Hulk's going to be in there. Is he a good guy? An anti-hero even? Or is he a bad guy? And if he's a bad guy, I mean, listen, the, one of the big differences between the real Captain America, Steve Rogers, and, and the heir apparent to the title, Sam Wilson, is that Captain Rogers had the super soldier serum. He wasn't just human. Sam does not. And even if he had the super soldier serum, I'm sure Steve Rogers could fight Hulk for a bit, but eventually the Hulk wins out. I mean, what can a Sam Wilson do? So good guy, bad guy. If a bad guy, what is I I do? think he's going to be a tragic figure in that mm -hmm. his his methodology, I mean his he he, he was well meaning. Like he thought to himself, I'm the president of the United States. What can I do when we're now having cosmic, we have to face cosmic well, level threats? Well, he's the secretary of defense, right? Or are they going to say he's president now? No, I think he's president. Oh, okay. I think he's president. So he's like, what in the world that we live in, in the universe we live in now, what can I do? I need to, and he, he transitioned. He, he took this because maybe they found out he was dying of cancer and they gave him this gamma radiation treatment to see what would happen. And he had good intentions, but like, you know, he became a monster. And I would imagine that he became, in the movie, we'll see him. If it is indeed the character, he's bad when he, it, it goes awry. But then he, he finds the error in his ways and is able to team up with Captain America at the end and solve whatever problem they have to solve. Because let's not forget, it's not like he's just bad and then they be, because he's appearing as Thunderbolt Ross in the Thunderbolts. So there's only so many limitations. So maybe he's not going to die. So maybe yeah. he's not going to die. Maybe he's going to be the villain of actually the Thunderbolts. Or could be. Like they need a team to actually take down this Red Hulk. Or he, he forms the Thunderbolts. It's wrong wrong team because they either need the real Hulk or no. they need Sentry to yeah, fight yeah. Red Hulk. That, that, that's the only reason why I would think it would cross, uh, cross over to that movie. But Well, question is for you guys. What do you think? Is this picture enough for you to go, you know what? It's probably Red Hulk. Maybe not. Maybe you're doubting the veracity of the image. It very well could be a fake. Who knows? I'm, I'm being told it's real, but maybe it's not. Whatever you guys think, let us know down below. All right, guys. With that down, let's move on to this, shall we? Infamously, when Bob Chapek was the, uh, for a, a short while, the, the CEO of, of Disney, he made the idiotic decision to take a bunch of Disney animation, whether it's Disney Animation Proper or Pixar, they're both Disney companies, and dump their movies on streaming, which you remember when they put movies like Soul, Luca, Turning Red on there, a lot of stories started coming out about just how pissed off the people at Pixar were. There was a very unhappy house over there. Well, uh, Bob Iger, of course, came back, and they announced that they would be returning or bringing Soul, Luca, and Turning Red to the theaters. But was that a good idea? And that is the topic of today's Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Listen, guys, if you got a topic for our show and you'd like to hear your voice on our show, go ahead and call our Mint Mobile hotline anytime 24-7 at 951-268-4259. And the question today is about, was this a good idea? Check it out. Hey, John and crew, this is Charles from Orlando, Florida. My question is in regards to the Pixar re-releases that Disney is putting out in theaters. I want to know if you think this is a misstep on Disney's part. According to Box Office Mojo, Soul did not crack a million dollars domestically when it was released for the two weeks that it was in theaters, and Turning Red, while opening this past weekend, only made five, a little over $500,000. Do you think this is a wrong step for Disney to re-release these films when they're barely making any money? Thanks. All right, Charles, thanks a lot for calling back in. And, yeah, I mean, look, the reality is Turning Red, which I still believe, and will hold fast to, should have won Best Animated Picture if it's taken out of theaters. But it came out of theaters, made a little over half a million dollars. Made over, sorry, I had my mic off there. Made over a little half a million dollars. Turning Red comes out, made a little over half a million dollars. Was, therefore... It a mistake. There's a couple things to keep in mind here, though, and then I'll get to the one major, major, major part. Turning Red is a movie that came out almost two years ago. And it's not really a re-release because it never had a theatrical release. It was just put straight to Disney. But 
for about two years now, and in some cases longer than two years, audiences have been able to sit at home, and if you're a Disney Plus subscriber, for free, watch Soul, watch Luca, watch Turning Red whenever you want it. It's there, free. And it's not like it's a 10-year anniversary or 15, like it was like two years ago. Not to mention, Disney put zero marketing budget into promoting the fact that these movies were going to be in theaters. They literally just did online posts and social media stuff and did the odd announcement here and there, but they kept the spending on the marketing of this event extremely minimal. So it doesn't even look like they put a ton of effort into getting people to know that these things were going to be out there. So was it a mistake for them to put these movies out? The answer is no. And the reason it wasn't a mistake was because of what the actual reason was that they put these movies in theaters. Now, normally when you do a big anniversary re-release, you put it out, you want to make a little extra cheddar, make a little bit extra money on that. You don't have to market it too awful much. You get it back out there and whatever. But making money on these movies in theaters was never the motivation for putting these in. There was one reason and one reason only that Disney decided to put Turning Red, Soul, and pretty soon Luca into theaters for a two-week run. And it was as an apology. This is an apology tour. This is Bob Iger making good for Pixar and going to Pixar and basically saying, we are sorry that the previous leadership took these movies and dumped them on streaming. We are sorry that the previous leadership downvalued the contributions that Pixar makes by no longer making Pixar theatrical event things and downgraded them in the eyes of our consumers. We apologize that that happened, and it's we know it's too late to make it good, but we at least want to make a gesture that we are going to take these movies that you guys at Pixar matter to us, and we're going to put them in theater. They're not going to make any money. We knew in advance they weren't going to make any money. It was never the goal to make money. This goal was about Bob Iger bending down, mm. puckering up, and kissing the ass of the people at Pixar because he knew they needed to. I mean, look, he's their boss. He can tell them to do whatever he wants. But he knows that the creatives always work best when they feel like they're appreciated. I mean, sometimes business decisions got to be made and they're not popular. True, but when you can... Keep the creatives happy. And that was always one of the big things before Bob Chapek came around that Disney was always known for. The talent loved working with Disney. Couldn't, I mean, sometimes they had to cut budgets. Sometimes they had to do layoffs. But the talent who did work with them always loved working with them. And that changed. That changed. When movies like Turning Red, Luca, and Soul got dumped straight to Disney, Disney+. Plus. And this was simply Bob Iger's way of saying, we're sorry. We're sorry that happened. It shouldn't have happened. We're going to, even though it's just a symbolic gesture, it doesn't fix everything. It doesn't make back any money, but as a symbolic gesture, it was pretty important. And that's why they did it. And when you understand, Rob, that that's why they did it, then no, it wasn't a mistake for them to do it because they spent hardly anything on marketing. They didn't put up really any more additional dollars. So Rob, understanding that, does this even, like, okay, it's a nice gesture, does this do anything to kind of increase the morale of Pixar, mend the relationship between the parent company and the sub company? I, I don't know. Was it ultimately a mistake for them to put these back out in theaters? Well, I don't think it's a mistake because, like you said, they didn't. The, the, here's look. Here's the problem. The way I see it, Disney people don't remember this, but they used to make the majority of their money re-releasing their famous animated films every couple of years like every five or six years they'd re-release their big animated films because there was a whole new generation of kids that had been born that grew up parents could take them to the theater and they would do very well as a matter of fact that was disney's part of their biz business model and and i see no reason why they couldn't continue that and the i think the problem the reason these films and by the way making five hundred thousand dollars with no marketing budget is respectable it's not unrespectable. Mm. But I would say this, if they had put, I mean, obviously, they don't know how much they're going to put into it. But if they had marketed this and done this as a push and said, see, for the very first time, 
some of Pixar's most recent triumphs in the movie theater and turned it into a thing over the course and say they were going to do it over the course of four months or something and put some marketing dollars behind it, they might have made a nice chunk of change. They could have made five, ten million bucks, depending on how they marketed it, because people just didn't know they were there. But wouldn't have even a half-hearted marketing push have cost them more than that five to ten million bucks they could have made? But I don't know. I uh, to be honest, I don't know. I mean, it were, 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 would require, you know, obviously a savvy marketing campaign. But it would. I'll tell you one thing: it would have gotten more people than saw it now because nobody knew they were out. You know, it's really funny. Like on Valentine's Day. They are re-releasing Amelie. I didn't know this until last night. One of the truly great movies ever made. One of my favorite movies Such of all time. A good Top movie. ten of all time. Jean Pierre Genet's Amelie came out in two thousand one. They're re-releasing it in theaters. I saw a big push on social media uh, that Amelie was coming out. There's a Valentine's Day trailer for it coming out, and it's 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 at quite a few theaters across the Southland. And I don't know if it's, maybe it's just in Southern California. I don't know, but I would imagine not. And I'm like, wow. Cause uh, that's why I met Elizabeth. And I'm like, because of that movie. And um, I, I it, there was a push there and I started looking into tickets and some of the tickets are, they're selling. And it was, it was an ad. And I, that was more than I ever saw for these Disney re-releases. Mm. The only difference is that Amelie probably isn't readily streaming somewhere like Disney plus is, you know what I mean? Could be, but I, I, I think there could have been a happy medium to both your points. Well, see, but that's that's problem. Too. There's also a bit of distance between us right now and when Amelie first came yeah. out, right? Right. So like, nostalgic. These yeah. movies were just out uh, a few breaths ago yeah. and have been available for free on streaming. Right. Whatever. So it, it's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, I and don't I, think I, we'll ever see them do it again like this. They've been also doing like, a restoration yeah. of Amelie in 4K. So maybe this is the first time. That's why I was curious. I'm like, ooh, is it the new restoration? Well, then in that case, like the advertisement, I mean, the, the, the movie re-release itself becomes an advertisement for the home video purchase, yes, right? 100%. So they're, they're kind of treating it as a commercial. Yep. Uh, I mean, when, when I feel like when it comes to Bob Iger doing this, I, I'm reminded of uh, Doc Holliday from Toons, Tombstone. Make no mistake, it's not revenge he's after. It's a reckoning. <laughs> it's a and it's rec a reckoning. You know, it's yeah. a resetting. It, it, it was a bit of a reckoning, and uh, we'll see if uh, the, how much the people at Pixar appreciate it or whether it was an empty gesture. We'll see. But in a, in a way, when you look at box office of Pixar, theatrical box office, does this get counted? Because $500,000, if that's the only money a movie like Seeing Red made in theaters, that's going to go on to the, the – and there'll have to be an asterisk next to it saying, well, it No, you're got. right. It, it, it will go there. And it, right? it, it brings down Pixar's overall – you know, overall. Well, that's been happening average. anyway. <laughs> right. But I mean, it, you know, to have four movies come out that gross less than a million dollars substantially pulls down your box office average. Right. But I think we know. I, I, of I think course. If they were ever to do that official averaging out, they probably wouldn't count these three movies. Anyway, guys, with that all down, we still got to talk about the best trailers that dropped during the Super Bowl. Also, we specifically want to single out and talk about that Deadpool and Wolverine. That's what we can call it now, Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. But before we do, we're going to take a quick second and thank a couple of sponsors of today's episode of the John Caper Show podcast. Our friends, my mobile service provider, and they should be yours, Mint Mobile and the good folks at Fume. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than a third on my cell bill than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash cam. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, 
fume. Have you ever tried to break a bad habit and it felt like you're climbing uphill? Yeah, well, we've been there too. But here's a breath of fresh air. Fume. It's not about giving up, it's about switching up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Bad fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and make replacing your bad habit easy. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. I'll be honest with you guys, I was a little uncertain about it until my package arrived and I tried it. I couldn't believe how perfectly balanced it is, how fun it is to have in your hands, and how great the actual flavor was. Plus, fume just released a magnetic stand for your fume, so there's no more or losing it around the house. So start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash campia and getting the journey pack today. Fume is giving listeners of the show 10% off when they use my code campia to help make starting the good habit that much easier. And thank you to our friends at Mint and Fume for sponsoring today's episode of the John Campia Show podcast. All right, guys, <clears throat> with that down, let's move on to this, shall we? Yeah, a lot of people watch Super Bowl for the game. A lot of people, non-sports fans, watch Super Bowl anyway for the commercials. But movie fans, we know what's up. We watch a Super Bowl. Well, I watch it for the football game primarily. But a lot of people watch <laughs> Super Bowl for the trailers. And there were trailers aplenty to go around. And we're going to talk about what we think some of the best ones were here. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to point out, I'm not going to talk too much about the Wolverine uh, the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, because we're going to talk about that more in depth and more laser focused as our next topic. But we'll talk about our favorite trailers. First of all, I got to mention that the Twisters trailer was yeah. better than I thought it would be, be because there's always a there's always a little bit of a problem with these natural disaster action movies. Like it's not like um, what was the one with uh, John Cusack? Uh, uh, Twenty. 2012 is that what oh yeah. 20, yeah right <laughs> where it's just like just you know they're just trying to survive the disaster right but you get movies like say in, in like a dante's peak you cannot fight the volcano when Dwayne the rock johnson is doing san andreas you, he cannot jump out of the helicopter and do a rock bottom on an earthquake and stop the earthquake and in twisters too the first twister was running run from the tornadoes they did something neat in this trailer which was to suggest that they had developed a technology that they think can bust a tornado. And to me, that was that's an interesting movie idea. The fact that we're not just, it's not just going to be the same movie as the first Twister. Drive towards it, you know, get some data and run away. And oh no, something's going to go wrong, right? But there's actually a purpose to it. Like, we think we have developed something that could possibly save lives and break up a tornado as it's in process of, of doing a thing. I thought that was interesting. Seeing Glenn Powell in there was pretty good. Um, not my favorite trailer, not in my top two or three favorite trailers of the Super Bowl, but it was better than I thought. So that one was pretty good. The Wicked trailer was pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, now, they showed us like a good 15-minute presentation of Wicked at CinemaCon last year, and that presentation was absolutely mind-blowing. Like, it took me from not giving two craps about this movie to being very, very excited for it. Me too. The trailer wasn't as good as that presentation, but it was solid. It, it was good. Yeah. I know my wife loved it. I think a lot of people liked it too. So can I, the can wicked... I just say this shot, though, real quick? Just so I, All I could think of was, was sadness. <laughs> <laughs> before she turned green. Yeah. Sad, sad. I'm sadness before <laughs> she turns green. That's a great observation. Um, so I, I like that a lot. Um, the Deadpool trailer, again, we'll go into more details on the Deadpool trailer in a few minutes, but the Deadpool trailer was great. I, I, it was not what I was expecting, but it was great. Some truly iconic lines and it felt like this trailer. And again, we'll talk about this more in a minute. It was Disney and Marvel and Ryan Reynolds right away telling all those people who were worried that Disney's not going to let Deadpool really be Deadpool. Yeah, no, they are. They, they, it took them 10 seconds to get to a pegging joke. 
10 seconds in. And then as soon as he says the pegging joke, the he looks Disney. right at the camera, right? Oh. Like seconds into doing that. So it's like they immediately told people, oh, don't you worry. Our gloves were off. They let us do whatever we wanted to do, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, there are a lot of other trailers. Uh, the, the one that I like the most, and I love the Deadpool trailer. We'll talk more about it in a minute. But I think my favorite trailer was actually Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Now, I'm way more excited for Deadpool than I am for this movie, but this trailer was great. You remember they put out that first teaser for a while ago, and again, it was a good first teaser. They kind of give you a little bit of sense of the tone, the visual style. They don't go much into the story points or whatever. You usually wait for that for the second trailer to come. Well, the second trailer came. We have a much better idea about really what the movie's about. <clears throat> this villain king ape is terrifying just him just go, what a glorious day what a glorious day what a glorious day i'm like this is freaky as hell and i thought they set him up beautifully some some great homages and real overtones of the original planet of the apes with like they're hunting humans because we've obviously fast forward a couple thousand years now at this point i thought visually it's absolutely stunning I already like the characters. The The villain they've set up is masterful. Uh, I absolutely, again, not my most anticipated movie, but I honestly think taking my good Canadian kid bias with Ryan Reynolds out of the equation, I actually think this was the best trailer that they played at it. Rob, what were some of the other trailers that maybe stood out to you and what ultimately was your favorite trailer? Well, I did like uh, The Fall Guy. It was kind of funny. You know, yeah. they of course incorporated the Taylor Swift joke in there. It was good. I preferred the, the first trailer. Yeah, I did too. I did, the tone good. of it, it was more, but I did like that trailer. Um, Despic was it Despicable Me 2? Mm -hmm. um, or 4. Well, that four, IBM four, commercial four, they did. Despicable Me 4. Yeah, I mean, it, I, and those are the two, but look, the ones that I was most interested in were Planet of the Apes and Deadpool. I'm a huge, like you, I'm a, well, I'm a huge Planet of the Apes fan all the way back to when I was a little kid. It was, for me, Planet of the Apes and James Bond were the first franchises. Right. And, you know, they were Go Ape festivals on our independent TV station when I was growing up, so you could watch all five of the original movies. And I have to say, the original of this new series, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I was so dubious going in, and I, I loved it. The James Franco, the orangutan meeting. I loved it. I thought it was so good. And while War of the Planet of the Apes, was, it was good, but it wasn't great. They still, incredibly solid trilogy. I, I went into this because I love the teaser. But at the beginning, when you hear the ape voiceover talking about uh, humans could... They could fly through the sky like birds. They could talk they could, across oceans. They could talk across oceans. I'm like, okay. I, I was like, immediately, this is what I want. And like, I'm like, what is this about? What does it mean? Kingdom truly with a King, you know, and, and the idea that, and when he says, we will go to conquer or whatever it was he was saying. And, you know, like we were pointing out this morning, we were talking before we went on the air. I'm like, and they even have a hot chick like Nova, yeah. you know, from the original Planet of the apes. And they, the whole thing, it, 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 it just, I look at this and I'm like, I can't believe we're getting the 10th planet of the apes film. And I'm just, I'm very, very excited for this. It, it, it goes all the way back to my childhood. And what's funny is, other than the Tim Burton movie, which I was not a big fan of, this is the fourth in a series that has always um, delivered for me. You know, maybe more so than others sometimes, but I looked at this and I'm like, what more could you possibly want from this movie? And like the first Rise of the Planet of the Apes, it's like coming out of nowhere. But, and the Twisters trailer, dude, I just can't believe that movie got made. And like you, I was like, yeah. the trailer's pretty good. The trailer's pretty good. But I'm like, why Why do I want to watch this movie? Okay, you've got interesting new technology. You can destroy tornadoes. But why do you have to drive into them? So, <laughs> and, and, and I love that my favorite thing about this trailer is, and I don't know if this is real, but when Glenn Plummer's in his truck and he uh -huh. has these drills that drill down yeah, into the ground I don't know about that to hold one. your truck. I'm like, great. I want to do that. Yeah. I want to go on. I want to ride a tornado. If that's root, if that's real technology, uh, sign me up. As it rips your windows out and then you get sucked out I of the car. I don't care. Hey, I'm going to hold on to that. car windows can hold in outer space, they can that's hold. That's right. If I can take a Fiero into orbit, tornado. I can I can ride a tornado. And I'm like, that's what I want. And I want to do it with Glenn, Glenn Powell. <laughs> Twitters, with that smile, and, I mean, that guy can do no wrong. Have you looked at the box office of his movie with 
Miss Sweeney. Yeah, I mean, it's not great, but it's pretty good for a low budget million for, for a low budget rom com. Come on, man, he can do no wrong. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I've got a theory about why they have to drive into the tornado. My theory is that Jonathan Kent's there. What's a, <laughs> no? Because I bet they have to be released in the eye of a tornado. Oh yeah, and 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 that you can't just. You can't guess where the tornadoes go, so you literally got to drive it. But you're right. That scene where the drills go down Come on. to hold it in place. Okay, that doesn't account for flying debris smashing through your windows, but that's okay. We'll let it go for movies. Then. But the, the Planet of the Apes one, there's almost like, not almost, there is a full circle thing to it. Because in the first Planet of the Apes of this series, you have the guy discovering this ape. That's more intelligent than the other apes, right? And it changes him and the way he looks at the world. Now we've come full circle to this Planet of the Apes movie where you have the ape finding a human who is more intelligent than the average human. So it's like they kind of come full circle on this. So I thought, what were some of, what were some of the other trailers that I might be forgetting? I mean, um, if, there was If. But the, that, the If thing. That, that was kinda, great. We've been yeah. talking about yeah, that. I though. mean, If yeah. is something I, that I'm getting. I what? didn't like the idea at first, but I'm getting And A Quiet Place. Place. Yeah, but they dropped the trailer for that actually a couple yeah. of days ago, right? Mm -hmm. Just like with they just ran it in, in uh, Despicable Me Four, they actually dropped the main trailer during the uh, uh, playoff games last week. Was there a Kung Fu? Kung Fu oh yeah, Panda Kung Fu 4? Panda Four yeah. looked pretty fun. Yeah, uh, that, I like the Kung. That's I always did, delivered. I didn't love Kung Fu. Kung Fu. I know. Okay. I did <laughs> now not you both love saying. Kung Fu Kung Panda Fu. Three, but I loved one Kung and two. Kung Fu Panda. And I and I'm kind of glad they've brought that back around. So what what were maybe some of the other ones there? That's all. I that was think. most. That's most of them at any rate. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think my favorite was was the Planet of the Apes one. All right, guys, let us know what were some of your favorite trailers from the Super Bowl last night. Jump on down to the description and let us know there. All right, guys, with that down. Let's move on to this, shall we? We all know the reason. Half the people on the planet were watching the Super Bowl last night, and it wasn't for the football game. And it wasn't for Taylor Swift. It was for Deadpool. And I was actually pretty surprised how early in the broadcast that first screen came up. It's like, oh, my God, they're dropping the Deadpool trailer right now. <clears throat> this trailer was magnificent. I absolutely loved it because, remember, this is just the first trailer, just the first one. Teaser. Teaser, really. I mean, longer than your general teaser, but this is just the first one, right? Remember, we were just talking about this for the uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Like, the first one was just give you a sense of the tone, give you a sense of what the look is going to be like, and then the second trailer, that's where you get your meat. So this was just the first trailer. <clears throat> and I thought there was, good, there was a couple of things they had to establish in this first trailer. One established that thing I said a little bit earlier, that guys, don't worry, this is not going to be a sanitized Deadpool now that it's under Disney. Mm. And again, just seconds into the commercial, he's talking about pegging. So it's like, okay, check, this is not a sanitized version of Deadpool. We're, we're, we're pretty safe there. Uh, show some familiar faces. Got we Negasonics there. I was very happy to see Colossus there. Shatterstar is there. What's the name of the dude from X Force? The average guy, the neighbor guy. <laughs> he was, yeah. What was his name I like? Forgot. Frank or Paul? I can't remember what his name was. Peter. Peter, Peter was his name. Seeing Peter there, and uh, uh, what was what was the taxi driver's name? It wasn't Dopinder. Like Dopinder, Dopinder, Dopinder yeah. right? I was gonna say Mohinder. No, he was from Heroes. Uh, Dopinder. Seeing him in there, of course, seeing uh, the girlfriend there. Although it doesn't look like she's his girl anymore. I think their relationship ended. I think I think their relationship ended because he talks about it was a rough year, and then when he's blown out the candle, she goes, "Happy birthday, buddy!" Oh. Right. So I, I think I think maybe that's part of what's been his rough year is lost. But that being said, then the TVA shows up. A lot of people had been speculating because, of course, at the end of Deadpool two, which. Jonathan Voiko had never seen the post credit scene to Deadpool 2 before. Yeah, I, I, I never got to the post credit so I'm like, oh, this was a thing. Yeah, so Jonathan <laughs> asked me today, so do you think at some, they're going to say at some point 
Deadpool did some time travel? I'm like, <laughs> you've never seen the post credit scene, have you? He's like, no. And then we watch. It's like, well, there's why the TV. So a lot of people have been speculating that the TVA may be a part of it because he's done that. Of course, you got the uh, Emmy Award winning actor from Succession in there now. I made that joke that uh, after leaving uh, Gojo, he was promoted to the TVA. He now runs I just the TVA. Wanted, I just assume in my mind that it's the same character. Or the TVA is a subsidiary of Gojo. Yeah, because it is, after all, uh, a multiverse. It's all connected. It's all connected. Now, I, I've seen some people saying, well, maybe this is like Fox's version of the TVA. Remember, the TVA exists outside of timelines and realities. There's only yeah. one TVA, so this is this is the TVA. They and man, I thought you got to make some jokes at in the trailer, in the first trailer, you got to make a couple of jokes at Marvel's and Disney's expense. And they went for it. And like right in it, we have Wade saying what a lot of audiences are saying I'm gonna, I'm your Messiah, I'm gonna save your little cinematic universe. I am Marvel's Jesus, <laughs> which is like one of the greatest lines. One of the greatest lines ever. And then, of course, the look on the dude's face. Uh, the coming, And then Pyro! Pyro from X-Men 2 pops up in it, which I thought was amazing to see. And actually, I didn't recognize him at first. And then the second time we were watching the trailer, my buddy Ryan, who was over watching the Super Bowl, he's like, wait a minute. That's actually Pyro. I'm like, I'm like you're right. Holy and Stanford with the Stanford with the goggles. Yeah, with the goggles and everything. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I saw a lot of stuff, like a lot of headlines saying Marvel fans believe they've spotted Dr. Doom in the trailer. And I, I, I know you got that image, Jonathan. Oh, yeah. But like a lot of people, like a headline's running, Marvel fans believe they've spotted Dr. Doom in the trailer. That's some Dr. Doom. Guys, yeah, that no. is not Dr. That is just some dude in a random mask. That's just, that's just cannon fodder. This is what SAG movie makers do all the time. SAG, you just put some guys in masks so you don't have to pay them SAG rate. I mean, it's that that is not believe. I don't know the movie. Ryan Reynolds hasn't sent me the script, but I can tell you with 100 percent certainty that is not Dr. Doom. No. But I'm sure the the <laughs> the agency that cut this trailer was like people think it's Doom. You know what I mean? The, 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 oh, uh, yeah. Disney will do that. But I mean, like, it's just it, more clicks for the uh, trailer. Yeah. They want to see the engagement. One thousand percent. Not Dr. Doom. Um, but that being said, they a lot. There's a lot of blood. In the trailer, there's a one shot of Deadpool, like, in the back of a car, like, which is blood splattered everywhere in the car. And they I mean, never... he got headshots. Oh, yeah, knives. headshots with blood splatter and the whole bit. <laughs> I mean, this picture is interesting. You know, we were talking about, is this is this actually, do they go to that scene from Age of yeah, Ultron? Yeah, is that the forest that Age of Ultron starts with, with the Avengers fighting their Which, way to the base. It would make sense. To, now, uh, again, or it's we, just a forest because there's a lot right, of it's just, Or it's just a forest. But I would say this. I would say that obviously we, we know that there's an uh, an X Men slash Brotherhood of Evil Mutant in there in Pyro. But what is the thing that they would have to fix? The first thing they'd have to fix. What would the first thing that Deadpool want to fix in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? These people aren't miracles. <laughs> They're, They're mutants. <laughs> so where would you go? The first place that you saw them where they were called miracles in that Hydra base. Right. So that, in my mind, that would be the first place. That... I mean, that could be a way they bring Wanda back if they wanted to. Right. Right. <clears throat> I, I I mean, it's it's a possibility. I mean, Because a lot what of that would do is if you did that, then everything that's happened from Wanda since the beginning of Age of Ultron wouldn't have happened, but then it would alter the course of the entire Marvel Universe from the beginning of Age of Ultron forward. I also noticed when Deadpool's lying on the ground, there's, you see on the left of yeah. that image, that is the cover of Secret Wars. One of the issues of, of the, Secret yes, Wars. The new, the new Secret Wars. Right. Not, not the original the older Hickman one. Run. Right. Is sitting there on there the ground now. beside him, which is very cool that they've got. I, I'm sure it's just, I, I don't, look, Every time there's any kind of an Easter egg in any right. Marvel, every everybody's looking for the meaning in it. Sometimes an Easter egg is just an Easter egg, uh, and and I'm, I'm I feel pretty good that that's probably just an Easter egg. But who knows? Who knows? Could have more deeper. But I love the. There's a couple things I'm I'm really happy about. If you had asked me yesterday, yesterday morning, do you think they should show Wolverine in the trailer? I would have said, of course you need to show Wolverine in the trailer. But you know what? 
the fact that they never really show him other than this last yeah. little thing and the back, like, of, patch. The back of his head yes yeah, patch yeah and and that i like you know what that was actually perfect just the way the shadows are just don't just stand there you dumb ape help me up give me a hand and then the blades come up no on the other hand i'm fine no problem no problem then he goes swing i like perfect i wouldn't have thought so yesterday morning but after seeing it done this way this was a great first trailer the next one will have to give us a little bit more context give us more give us some actual hugh jackman saying some lines and stuff like that yeah 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 but that's the second trailer as a first trailer i thought it was just great and the only trailer i thought that was better than it at the super bowl was one that was a second trailer the the second kingdom of the planet of the apes trailer on that this was a brilliant first trailer and you know what rob this thing has already got like well over 20 million views in like 12 hours um and i think this trailer has has already proven what you and i have been saying for a long time there is no such thing as comic book movie fatigue there is mediocre movie fatigue audiences are getting tired of mediocre stuff of okay at best you know when marvel at one point was putting out banger after banger after banger and putting out great experience after great experience lately it's been a mixed bag coin toss maybe they give me but then this trailer drops and everybody's hyped everybody's hyped and who knows rob maybe wade wilson is marvel jesus maybe he will save the mcu after all anyway rob what were your thoughts about the trailer what stood out to you well, there's uh, for me. I have to say that I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very funny, but I did see a potential problem, in the sense that it seems like this movie is is really going into the multiverse deep, especially all the things that Loki has established. You know, the end of time. We're outside the He Who Remains, the castle, the that that land there, the and void, the void, and and the thing is, if the void. Is this like the new, are they insinuating it's the new, it's battle world from this, the Hickman run of Secret Wars where everyone's going to wind up? And and because it looked like the scene with Pyro, it looks like a post-apocalyptic wasteland because what's interesting is everybody can get dumped there. Every time that a timeline is trimmed or, or pruned or whatever, you could dump potentially every single character in the world or in the universe, the multiverse could wind up here. And that's interesting, but is that too reliant on the on the the TV shows? Because one of the things that the Deadpool movies have always, the two Deadpool movies have always done is that regardless of the s superhero shenanigans, they've actually told a, its own story that exists outside of all of the superhero shenanigans. Including like, the Fox superhero universe. Uh, absolutely, yeah. uh, absolutely. And so the thing about the Deadpool universe, I, like I was so impressed. I love the first Deadpool. I, but it also told a legitimately great story about a guy. In a way, it's like Iron Man 1, in that for all the shenanigans and all the references and all the fourth wall breaking and all the, it was kind of this romantic story about a man who was wronged, who was seeking revenge and wanted to be together with the woman he loved. So, and that's the only thing that I worry about is that this movie might lean, and I, I have no evidence to support this idea other than this trailer seemed a lot, it, it, it didn't give us a sense, however, what I am hoping is this entire movie could be one big meta commentary on the state of the world and the actual merger between Fox and Disney and what does that mean to the larger world, our world. Mm. And the whole thing could be just the most vicious send-up of corporate mergers. And they seem to be – I hope that they're going to really play with this idea because that's what it seemed like to me. And I'm like, this could be one of the most scathing indictments – of the American corporatization of all of our beautiful businesses ever. And I think that's, a, that's where they're going. And if that's where it's going to go, this could be one of the most anarchic and anarchistic, uh, subversive films we've seen in a long time. And I'm so there for that. Uh, one of the things that I was a little bit afraid of going into Deadpool 3, I, I've been saying this for a while, is does it go too meta? Does it go too... Uh, multiverse does it go too much of stuff like that and 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 that is a worry that I still have and, I, and, and I'm not going to feel better about it until I see the movie itself but I will say this one of the mistakes Marvel has been making over the last couple of years is that reliance on 
You got to have watched our Disney Plus show in order to be able to watch this. But you know what? I watched this trailer and I was like, here's what was brilliant about it. If somebody was watching this trailer that had never seen Loki, never heard of the TVA, none of that kind of stuff, right? It didn't matter. Uh, somebody just watching this trailer got it. Oh, this is some kind of interdimensional police, and they're recruiting Wade. Because Deadpool to... doesn't know. Yeah, because Deadpool so doesn't know. So we're Deadpool. That's right. It was told kind of from Deadpool's perspective. So like you didn't have to you didn't have to watch a single minute of Loki to go, okay, this is some kind of interdimensional police force, and they're recruiting Wade to save the universe. Or and something putting like that. McFadden in there. Easy. Yes. Brilliant. And the way so good. the way he the way his performance just in a few. I've loved him since he was in MI. MI5, uh, the TV series, and he's great, way before Succession, but the fact that they cast him in that role, I thought was genius. Yeah. I, that I was think a genius It, it was great because you're filling the shoes, in a way, of Owen Wilson's yes. Mobius character, who is so likable, so you got to have another agent, and instantly, like, love him, people are going to recognize him from Succession, and even if you never watched Loki, this didn't lose you. You knew it. By the way, I also want to throw this out there, too. I'm seeing a lot of people saying, oh, my God, the villain is going to be Professor X's sister. Cassandra Nova from well, New X-Men. That may, it's possible that that could be Cassandra. All it was was a bald head. Right. And everybody knows there could only be two possible people that could are bald. It could be Moondragon. It could be Lex Luthor, for all we know. I mean, so, yes... It, it's theoretically possible it could be Nova, Cassandra Nova. But all I just want to caution my fellow, all it was was the back of a bald head. It literally <laughs> could be a brand new character. It could be anybody. There are not only two. A bald head does not only equal two possibilities. Although I will saying. say when she was introduced, and in, I want to say Grant Morrison's new X-Men run, um, you know, they brought the idea that Xavier had a twin, an in, in utero twin that we didn't know about. I love that idea because I remember reading that comic. She was a very formidable bad person. Yes. And uh, I would love to see that brought in, but it would require, it's the kind of thing that like the comics itself, it's not like some established villain when it showed up that um or the ancient one there you go I, that, that's which, where my mind went to which by the way angel and and ritwick in the live chat is saying obadiah stain yeah oh, <laughs> it seemed like yeah, a woman yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but if it is if it is the ancient one i mean that would certainly class up the joint and it would make sense because she's already talked about the infinity stones yeah, and all yeah. i mean I, I i would love to see you know if, if they have michael pena in this movie and have him explain the MCU to Wade. Like, let me tell you where things are. Okay, so this guy then <laughs> He's a TVA agent now. <laughs> I, I I honestly listen, every fan, every fan thinks they know best, right? right? About this is what the MCU should have. We're all like that. We're all stupid that way. Like we all do that. My I'm the fan, so I know best thing has always been. How are you not leveraging Michael Pena more in this? Luis is one of the great characters, and he can be a very meta character because of the way he does that. Like, I don't know how you don't start off every MCU movie with, okay, let me catch you up to speed. And like, just Michael Pena. He might have had him. other external so reasons, you know, but, you know, there's the channel Emergency Awesome. I always watch that channel to get my more up to date Marvel gossip. Yeah. But, um, and that seems pretty accurate for the most part. That's why I tell, sometimes stay away. But I have to say that. This does look like they've given him carte blanche to come up with everything that he wants. And I will say this, mm. of all the people that are running this, between Hugh Jackman, um, Ryan Reynolds, our patron saint, and of course, Sean Levy. Yeah. Th the fact that they can just sit there and make shit up and make it happen. And I, the same writers who did the Deadpool movies. The, yeah, Ryan I just Reynolds. hope they keep it all together because the potential, this trailer did tell me the potential for it to spin off into crazy oblivion. They've got to have some kind because the Deadpool, both Deadpool movies had an emotional grounding to them. Mm -hmm. But I'm convinced more than ever we're going to get a musical number. Oh, I'd be. There I think even that. from that teaser, you have emotional grounding because you actually see some like pain in Wade's yeah. face. So yeah, yeah, and that, the that, fact the, that he's wearing a wig is hilarious. I love to that. Me. Wig. Oh my! <laughs> and I love how you see get pulled. It's like the yeah, first thing he, he loses. loses it. Did, oh, oh by the way, the joke. It says, 
while you were unconscious, you defecated yourself. Yeah. And I was just, I wasn't unconscious. I was unconscious. Anyway, like, it was, <laughs> it's like, this is such a way thing to so are you going to say, Jonathan? Sorry. Oh, I, oh, let's not forget about the uh, alternate title. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Here's the most exciting thing about this to me. And we've talked about this ad nauseum for years. One of the great things about the Deadpool movies is the visceral, viral marketing campaigns that they do with all this weird, crazy stuff, right? <laughs> so right after the trailer drops, Hugh Jackman puts that up on his social media. Wolverine and asshole, right? And I, I was telling Rob, Rob and I were talking about this this morning. I said, I think we are in, because when does it come out again? June or July? June. July. Is it July? I yeah. thought it was June. It's July. Okay. End of July. I'm thinking now, but. So you know what? I think you're right. July. Oh, it's so the 26th. What's that? It's July 26th. Okay, so yeah. we're in February, March, April, May, June, July. So we're five months away. But I think we are in for five months of that. Yeah. And I am almost as excited about these next five months and just seeing what Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds do. Because they've already they've pre-planned it. Oh, now yeah. Now they know that they can pre-plan all this. And if. The fact that I even love the broken friendship bracelet. Oh my god! The tea and the thing. Friends that says. And then the the stuff that they're saying underneath that. I forget what Ryan Reynolds said. I'm like, you're towing the line there, buddy. You're put. You're going far. It's so good. Uh, it's just it's it's so fun, and I am literally like I said, I I'm never excited just for the marketing campaign of a movie, but I am legitimately like remember Deadpool two, and Ryan Reynolds put out this video of him in his Deadpool costume playing with a cable toy and a Deadpool toy. And he just went through this, like, it was just ridiculous, but it was like some of the most fun stuff on the internet. And by the way, the whole reason to have the internet for a couple of years there was just to pay attention to the Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> Hugh Jackman rivalry, right? It was like one of the best things online. And we're in for five months of this. And I hope it's nonstop. You might say, Oh, you put out too much stuff. Maybe we get tired. No, we're not going to get tired of it. Not if it's it's jokes. <clears throat> not if it's funny. Yeah. Not if it's funny. And especially if they make a lot of Disney jokes. If Ryan Reynolds makes a lot of Disney... Like, I want to see a picture of Ryan Reynolds li literally at Disneyland pissing on a bush. Maybe that bald head was well, Bob that, Chapek. That, that's a little meta, The John. bald right. head was Bob <laughs> Chapek, was the villain of the universe the whole time. <laughs> that's the new one. Bob Iger would totally uh. do that. Make Bob Chapek the villain. Uh, God, man, I, I am just so excited for this movie. I, <clears throat> and you know what? If you had asked me a week ago, I would have said they're gonna the movie's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be really fun and funny. I mean, it's the same writers. It's Ryan Reynolds. The movie, the movies Ryan has made with Sean Levy have been great. Whether it's Free Guy, which is awesome, or Adam Project, which was surprisingly good to me. Not as good as Free Guy, but but really good nonetheless. I would say the movie's going to be great, but I don't think it's actually going to change anything in the MCU other than bringing Deadpool in. Well, that's what I would have said a week ago. I'm actually wondering if they do change some things in the if they kind of reset the universe. And of course, Ryan did a little bit of a a little bit of a Black Adam kind of joke, but he didn't say the hierarchy is about to change. But he, what was the line he said specifically? Said, I'm about to change everything in your little cinematic universe or something like that. Yeah. He didn't say the hierarchy of power is about to change. See, a week ago, I would have thought, okay, but nothing of substance will change. Like, he saves Wanda and saves Quicksilver, and now they are in the MCU. But now I'm not so sure about that. They might actually substantively change something in this universe. Mutants. <clears throat> mutants. I mean, mutants. Listen, this is we actually have the name of a mutant in the title for the first time. Well, I guess when they established that Ms. Marvel is actually a mutant, maybe they did that already. But now we got Wolverine in the title. There he is. I oh oh, big question. Do you think that was Madripoor? Yes. Where he finds him playing poker or yeah. playing cards or something? Yeah, because because in that I classic mean, classic Wolverine white tux. Yeah, and, and, and Madripoor was such a big part of when the Wolverine solo comic started, and and obviously they went there in Falcon and Winter Soldier, so they've established it. And the thing about Madripoor is it's a fictional. Uh, almost like a Gotham City type of a place. It's a yeah. port There's city. There's that classic, that classic, classic. Wolverine yeah, absolutely. Patch look. And 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 Wolverine has a long history going to. And Madripoor is a, a place where everything can happen. It's not. It's not um, New York. You know, it's not an American city. So there's all. See, there you go. There's a lot of stuff that can happen there. 
I hope there's some good Canadian jokes too, because both Deadpool and Wolverine are. Uh, I'd are love to see Canadians. the Ten Rings come back. Do you think we get like a very subtle under the breath Wrexham reference? Oh, for sure. There has to. There has to be I mean, some that self, town, Some self deprecation jokes. In not there to too. mention to be payback for in a good way for Wrexham because they promote Deadpool because they love them. You know. Oh right. yeah. Oh yeah. I think the whole Wrexham fan song about yeah. them is. Is Rob is Deadpool and Rob McElhaney. Well, not Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney. Right. I mean, but here's something in within Deadpool continuity. Deadpool killed Ryan Reynolds before he Dude, bought Wrexham. That was that's yeah. that's true. <laughs> I mean, he kill, he kills him in the postcard scene of Deadpool too. I that, I died or today yeah, when you, I saw I, that. Yeah, you'd never seen that. <laughs> but, and like as Ryan. we're watching as I'm watching the Deadpool two postcard scene with Jonathan, who had never seen it. Yeah. It's all funny, but we're just I'm just waiting for it to get to him reading the Green Lantern script. So who owns Wrexham in the Deadpool universe? Rob McElhenney all by himself. Yeah. Oh, Rob McElhenney and, and right. Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman. Oh, that, that, oh my God. Okay, that <laughs> oh would God. be a hilarious joke. Because that also wraps in the rivalry. Uh, have yeah. Rob McElhenney sing, you know, you the and best you, partner yeah. a guy could have. Hugh yep. Jackman. Oh, yeah. that, okay. Which, by the way, would not really break the fourth wall. No, not really. Or would <laughs> in the best way. All right, guys, listen. I'm sure you guys will have a lot more to say about the Deadpool trend. We're going to get to that and get to your comments and questions here in just a second. Uh, but before we do, getting to the most important part of the show, hearing from you, we're going to take another second here and thank another sponsor of today's episode of the John Campbell Show podcast, our friends at Harry's. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands, except Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like redwood, wildlands, and stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stay sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. And thank you to our friends at Harry's for sponsoring today's episode of the John Campia Show podcast. All right, guys, with that down, let's get on to the most important part of the show. Hearing from you guys. Jonathan, what do we got up first from our first live up, chat? We've got Sanchez guy. Uh, hey, guys, did you have fun watching the Super Bowl? I, I, listen, it was a great game, but again, it frustrated the hell out of me. Again, look, I like the Kansas City Chiefs, but they don't deserve to win the Super Bowl. Last week, they only scored 17 points. You should not be able to advance the Super Bowl sh scoring 17 points. This week before... Nine seconds left in the game. They had only scored 16 points. You should not win the Super Bowl when that happens. And again, San Francisco gave it away by passing the ball on third and four with less than two minutes left in the game when they were already in field goal range. They gave it away. But listen, it's Patrick Mahomes. He's no Tom Brady, but he's the only football player playing right now who's got the potential to be the next Tom Brady. He's now got three rings, which is a far cry from the seven that Tom has. But if anybody has the chance of catching up to Tom Brady, it's that Patrick Mahomes kid, man. He is freaking dangerous. I'm not even a big fan, but I'll tell you right now, if I was putting together a football team, if I was a GM in an NFL city right now and I was putting together a football team, he's the first guy I pick up. He's the first guy I get. So, yeah, had a lot of fun, but very frustrated by the result nonetheless. But congratulations, another Super Bowl ring for the Kelsey family. All right, what's next? Uh, Alex Bartholomew says, part one, hey guys. Oh my God, and he's sending like a $50 yeah. super chat. 50 Thank you, Alex. Appreciate that, man. This is very Amazing. generous of you. Uh, he says, hey guys, Twister was my first theatrical experience as a kid. Nice. It spurred my love for both the theater and storm chasing, and now I've been chasing for over a decade. Wow. Twisters is my most anticipated film of this year, but do you think, you know, I don't know if I ever saw it come through. 
So we might have to. All right. So no gap two. Uh, do I think? Yes, I think. Sort of depends if you ask. If I can. see it up there, I'll, you know we'll address it. But. Listen, I look. I was like a lot of people. Why are you making a Twister sequel? And why are you not bringing back Helen Hunt? But okay, whatever. The the look. I'm not going to say it was one of my top three trailers of the night, but that trailer was better than I thought it would be, Rob. And it did the job of a trailer. It actually took me from being not interested in this movie. To actually, I'm interested in the movie now. Now I want to see it. Like, did it move the needle for you at all? A little bit. A little bit. I have to say, this other YouTuber I watch a lot, Jesse Gender, made the joke about how reference James Cameron, the story of James Cameron, and how he came up with the idea to sell aliens to Fox. He was on a chalkboard in, in a room, and he just wrote the word alien. And all these, all these executives were looking around, and then he put S, and then wrote the two dollar signs <laughs> in the S. And I'm like, I want to believe that that's exactly how twisters got made because there is no way more time has gone by since twister and twisters came out than, than went by with the hustler and the color of money mm. with paul newman playing fast eddie felson how do you get this movie made that's it i'm like there's no way that this movie but i watched that trailer and like you pointed out if i want to know if that technology is real I don't think there's weird flying silver drones that can go up into the middle of a twister, but do they actually have some kind of tornado tech- buster? I want to know. Is that based on is that based on potentially real technology? And I, I, you know, why should they not fly drones into? Why? why I don't too know. Too fast, too twisty. Yeah, that is going to say too fast, too twisty. I don't know. You know what? Like you. Long story short. I liked it, and Glenn it, Powell. Glenn Powell's a movie star. It yeah. definitely had that '90s disaster film sensibility, even in the dialogue and the delivery. Yeah. The only thing that I think was wrong with the trailer is that the first Twister trailer gave us the flying cow, cow, right. which changed trailers forever. Every trailer had to have a sting, and I figured I was waiting. I'm like, this sting has got to be the best sting ever seen, but it kind of wasn't. What if it was actually the wrestler sting flying <laughs> through a window? Uh, by the way. Am I the only one that my primary thought when I was watching that trailer was, man, I miss Bill Paxton? The whole time, oh, yeah. Oh, like, I miss dude, Bill Paxton. I'm not saying I miss him in Twister. I'm yeah, saying yeah, I miss yeah. Bill Paxton. Yeah. Yeah. All because right. you miss his presence. Oh, he's so good. He was always so good. It doesn't matter if he's in Aliens. And he, it doesn't matter if he's my all-time favorite action film, um, uh, True Lies. I'm pathetic. I mean, it was... It was <laughs> uh, anyway, all right. What's next? Jonathan uh, Vigoa says, Zaslav cancels Coyote versus Acme without watching it and refuses to counter offer even if they make more than the tax write-off. Or tax write-off? That's a question. Seems uh, petty and a, bad, and a bad look. Nope. It's the absolute right thing to do. I already established that. It's absolutely the right thing to do. Why would you give one of your competitors a movie at a discount price? Why would you do that? Hey, we spent 70 to $75 million making this. Why would I ever let one of my competitors benefit from that while giving me less than what it costs me to make it? No, you'd be an idiot. No, you'd, you'd have to get what it costs. And also, you'd I have think- to get back what it costs, or you just write it off. And doing anything otherwise would be moronic. Because then, he, yeah. Why would you give your competitor, here, competitor, you go and profit, and you don't even have to give me how much it costs to make. That would be one of the right. stupidest things. Because they could if they want do. it, then they should believe in it. Let's say it costs seventy million, then they should believe in it that it's worth seventy million, not thirty-five million. Yeah, well, and, and that's the thing. They are saying, look, all we want, all Warner Brothers is saying they want. They're not even looking to make a profit. They're like, just give us what we what we spent to make it. That's all. Just give us what we what we spent to make it, and then you can have the movie, and no other studio. Wants I've it. also been curious, John, about the copyright, because it's dealing with Warner Brothers characters right. like Wile E. Coyote. If yep. somebody buys it outright, who gets the copyright? Well, they'll probably get the copyright on this individual piece, but it won't imply any extended copyright. So, right. Like if Amazon came along and bought the movie, let's say, they couldn't then make a sequel with those with those Warner Brothers characters. Unless, unless they paid a licensing fee or whatever. But could you make a sequel with the human characters? Maybe. If you don't include WBIP, maybe. But yeah, this notion that, that any company should let their competitor have an advantageous thing of, we're going to get a $75 million movie that we only spent $50 million on. You'd be an idiot to do that. It, it, it's absolutely would be the wrong thing. It's better for you to just make the $45 million in tax breaks Write it off and move on. And the very fact that no other studio 
is willing to pay what the movie cost? Sorry, I know it's, it's, no, it's not the popular thought. I know it's not the popular thing, but it 100% proves Warner Brothers right. The fact that not a single other studio is willing to buy it proves that they're right to do what they're doing. It, it's absolutely the right thing to do. And they've done so, a couple really stupid things lately, but this is the right thing for them to do with it. And I say that as somebody who wants to see this movie. I want to see it. But if you can't, if you legitimately don't think you're going to make the money back just from the money you got to put into the marketing budget of it, I, I'm going to tell you right now. Is Rob, I was saying this last week. Here's the truth. Over the last year, I've had many people write in and ask about Wicked. I've had many people write in. We don't always use the questions, but we've had a lot of people write in and ask about Fall Guy. We've had a lot of people write in and ask about a new Quiet Place movie. We've had a lot of people write I have not received, before the, uh, Warner Brothers announced that they were scrapping the Coyote versus Acme, outside of years and years ago when they first announced it, I haven't received a single question from a single viewer about Coyote versus Nobody was interested in this movie. This movie was not going to make any money. And th it wasn't until the fact that they canceled that everybody comes out of the woodwork, oh, we all wanted to see it. Well... Talk to one of the other studios. Ain't none of them paying for it. None of the other studios think it's going to work. So why should Warner Brothers? Anyway, it's kind of my thought on that. All right, what's next? Rafael Castillo says, The American Dreamer trailer with Peter Dinklage and Shirley MacLaine made me laugh out loud. I don't remember seeing that one. I haven't I haven't seen it, but I, uh, Shirley MacLaine and Peter Dinklage, I'm in. When's the last time Shirley MacLaine did something? I don't know. That's why I'm in. I'm in. I've always loved her. I mean, I, I really, I was just a kid, but she did the one with Deborah Winger. Um, yeah, Terms of Endearment. Terms yeah. of Endearment, where, by the way, both her and Deborah Winger were both nominated for Best Lead Actress. And Jack Nicholson. At the Academy Awards. I was just thinking about that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, but I man, I cannot remember the last time I saw Shirley MacLaine in something. That's really interesting. All right, what's next? Um, PR says, uh, in the scene with Wade on the ground and Logan approaching, you can spot Secret Wars 2015 yep. number four and Pingo Dose Bottle uh, from your The Incredible Hulk okay. uh, film. Okay, I've seen some people online suggest that, okay, so there's like a green bottle sitting on top of the comic. When I look at like closer pictures of it, I don't think it's the same one from the Hulk. Because yeah, it's a green bottle. Yes, it is. There's a lot of beers, a lot of things that have green bottles. But when you look at the label, the label to me looked distinctly different than the one from The Incredible Hulk. I mean, I, I might be wrong. I would love to see that connection to my movie. Right. But I don't think it was the same bottle. It was definitely the Secret Wars. Are you cover. sure you didn't shoot a cameo for this? I am. Uh, As part of a TVA like, I, I, soldier? I signed an NDA. I signed a non-disclosure agreement. Right. I, I can't talk about it, Rob. You guys okay. can't talk about it. You guys want to know the last movie Shirley MacLaine? Yes. Yeah. Noel with uh, Anna Kendrick. Right Anna here. Kendrick, though, that horrible, horrible Christmas uh, movie that, that was went on Disney+. That was in 2019. But she also appeared in Only Murders in the Building oh, in 2022. Oh, very strange. Oh, that's, that's right. I totally forgot about her being in Noel. He was brief, yeah. Oh, that, yeah. That was a bad. I love Anna Kendrick, but boy, that was a bad. I love movie. Anna Kendrick oh. too. All right, what's next? PR is back. Guy saying, "God, I love this part." Is Pyro from X Two? Yep. I, I didn't recognize him until my buddy watching the thing with me saying, "That's Pyro," and I'm like, "No, oh wait, I think you're right. It is. That's pretty <laughs> cool. I love X Men Two so much. You know what? It, Honestly, it was peak. It was peak. Here, let me go off on a little side trail here. <clears throat> whenever the the a, a movie conversation comes around about you know show don't tell i always think the best example ever of show don't tell in in movie storytelling the example i always use is from x-men 2 there's a scene where pyro um and bobby and uh, uh, uh was it kitty was it kitty pride or was it and that, no, no, it was um, um, Rogue. Rogue. Go into Bobby's parents' house. Yeah. Right? So there's a scene where they walk into Bobby's parents' house. And as they're walking through the living room, a two-second shot, Pyro stops for a second and looks at a picture on the wall of Bobby with his parents in what's clearly a very loving family photo. And then the camera cuts back to Pyro's face. 
And in those two to three seconds, without a single line of dialogue, we deepened our understanding of that pyro character. We instantly know he did not have a happy childhood. He wishes he had a loving family. His background is not the same. Back All of this story was told in a couple of seconds with a glance and then the camera back on the character's face. And we got a wealth of story and background with the character from that one. I think it's one of the best storytelling without dialogue moments uh, I think it's a great example of one of the best ways they've ever used that in film. And I, I've always loved the character ever since. All right, what's next? Jesse Roy says, how about them Chiefs? I mean, they didn't deserve it, but it's Patrick Mahomes. They they got their third. I am going to be very, very curious because Travis Kelsey is getting near the end of his career. Him and Jason are both uh, going to retire soon. I think Jason will retire before Travis. Travis, I think, has one or two more years. When Travis Kelsey is not in the lineup, the Chiefs are an average NFL team. They, they don't really shine when Travis Kelsey isn't there. It's going to be interesting to see how they adapt and evolve once Travis Kelsey retires in the next couple of years. Because he's getting he's in his mid-30s now, big physical guy. He might want to settle down with Taylor now. They're going to be both financially set for life. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. All right, what's next? Dr. Stinky, uh, <laughs> that is the best trailer Marvel's released in so long. Oh, it really is. My favorite scene is when the, he suits up and splits up in the elevator and moans, keep it filthy. That was a classic Deadpool shot. Yeah. And just a little, ah, uh, after he does, comes up from the splits, it's, you know what, Rob, I say this from once in a while, it's one of those shots that felt like it was taking me home. You know, like, ah, yes, we're back. Deadpool's back. We're 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 home now. We're right where we should be, and uh, I think you're right. I can't listen. Even for some of their subpar films, Marvel's put out some pretty good trailers. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I I agree. This is the best trailer Marvel's put out in a long time. I I, I really do think it is. I think it's the best trailer they put out in a while. All right. What's next? Um. Oh, sorry. Uh, Azaz says, "How about them Chiefs? Thoughts on the game? Kind of covered that, but yeah." Uh, yeah, I already gone into it, uh, but it was, hey, listen, overtime game in Super Bowl, what more can you ask for? Yeah, plus, I mean, if you look at where the Chiefs were at the beginning of their season, <clears throat> didn't look so good for them. And they've been, they've been able to, they've been clutch players when other people have not. You know, when you come to the Super Bowl, you, you can't make those kinds of mistakes. You can't yeah. make San Francisco look, San Francisco had a much better season than the Chiefs in the they long run. They have a run. better team. They but, have a better but team. A better than team but the yeah. Chiefs, man, were able to pull it out. I mean, they barely got into the playoffs. Well, no, they didn't barely. They got get a, into... It was a wild card game. Yeah, but I mean, the only two teams aren't wild card. Are, are wild card. But games, still, right? I mean, it was still it was a tough it was a tough season. Yeah, for them. it wasn't their. They, they didn't. Started they, off... they, they compared to the 49ers, they did not have that kind yeah. of a season. I mean, they they opened the year with a loss against Detroit. Again, the Baltimore Ravens just choked. The Baltimore Ravens yeah, just they did. simply choked. Kansas couldn't score more than 17 points, and yet the, the Ravens just absolutely choked. And then last night, a fluke punt going off the back of a guy's ankle set up the only touchdown they had in regular in regular I'm time. telling you, Taylor Swift is a witch. She used her, she, her supernatural powers and pocus. conjured up all of this. I'll tell you. Oh, what did Joe Biden write? Our script worked. <laughs> is that what Bi Biden got on yeah, social media to troll all the people who are like he did. the NFL is fixing he the did. game? And uh, he Biden wrote, got he, on his wrote the script work. Yeah, no, he wrote just like we wrote it. Just like we wrote it. That yeah. was it. Uh, all right, what's next? Dwayne Cinema says so. My girlfriend has officially experienced the scene in Last of Us Part Two. To no surprise, she was pissed. Definitely, she shed a tear, and now she wants the person dead. It was gold. She needed <clears throat> to play more. Um. Can't go much into spoilers, but yeah, yeah, I don't I don't want to go into too much here, except it's 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 going to be the next red wedding reaction trend on YouTube. Oh, I can't wait to when I, the, I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. When the scene happens in Last of Us Part, and it's not going to be at the beginning of remember, they're they're stretching out the oh, second yeah. game into two seasons. Yeah, yeah. They have so it's to. not going to be early that the scene happens, but when that scene happens, it's going to be the next red red wedding reaction video trend it's there, gonna be pretty fun there's gonna have to be so much i was thinking about all the other characters in part two 
There's going to be so much character development in season two and three. I don't know if I'd want to be, I don't want to say the actor's name. I don't know if I'd want to be that person. Yeah, it's oh, I'm, it's it's a terrific performer that they just got. It's oh, yeah. A terrific performer. I don't know if it's I'd want to be them, though. <laughs> All right, what's next? Uh, we just did Dwight Cinema, right? So uh, Dylan Fernando, over under 20%, Armor Wars gets canceled. Under. Uh, they, they already showed kind of a big commitment to it by moving it from it was going to be a series and they literally gave the, it a promotion and they said no 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 disney plusing for you you are this is going to be a feature film so i that considering now granted that was before Iger came back but it's it seemed like feige was pretty on board with this the fact that they decided to give it the promotion uh, is it possible they cancel it sure but i would say it's under 20 percent. i say it's under a one in five chance that they cancel it what do you think rob I think they're going to keep it because I honestly believe, remember, they acquired Fox in 2019. It's now 2024. It's been half a decade. Whatever their plans are, I'd like to believe that there were plans within plans within plans unfolding. I think whatever whatever they were planning on doing with Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine, all of this is leading someplace that they were planning to go. And while they had to make changes... And I think the fact that they made Armor Wars turn into a movie rather than a series is part of those plans. I agree. Yeah, 100%. Uh, again, everything it's possible. It's possible, but we'll see. All right, what's next? Uh, we got Marie Reich, who says, Taylor Swift has more championships than the Cowboys since 96. Anyway, was really uh, was a really good game. Hey, listen, all the whining and complaining that people like me are doing about how this went, it was a very thrilling game. You know, especially, you know, a few years ago, there was there was a Super Bowl. I, I'm trying to remember which one it was. We're like, you know what? It was New England versus the Rams. And it was like just a very dry game. Like not a lot happened. I mean, Tom Brady got another ring. Ho-hum. But I mean, it was a pretty dry game. But th this was a thrilling game. It was tight and close the whole whole way. I thought San Francisco had the opportunity to blow it open. Like, they were up 10 nothing. I thought they had the opportunity to blow it open. But it was a left for right, cross for, for uppercut, right down to the wire. And, like, I may not have liked the result. The game was great. And it adds to a growing – I mean, and, and listen, they called it, and it's true. This is now three and four out of four years. This is a dynasty. The Kansas City Chiefs are now officially a dynasty. You, you can't win that many championships as close together and not be. A two, two is two. Three is a dynasty. And they're a dynasty now, and it's continuing to build the, the legend of Patrick Mahomes. Is Let's that three see and how five? long he can carry it on. Three and five or three and six? Three and five. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. Uh, something. Or three, three out of the last four. I, I can't remember. Even three and six would be impressive. That's 50 ha half. Yeah, them, I so. mean, it's, it's a dynasty. It's legit yeah. a dynasty. All right, what's next? Um, Wesley Cunningham says, anyone else, uh, and I mean, com no, anyone else completely, and I mean completely forgot uh, another Twister was still a thing, but hey, it looks hella fun. What do you all think? There have been times over the past year and a half that I forgot that it was coming, but every once in a while, news would pop up. So it's, it's been our mind. And we talked about the fact that we were anticipating a Twister's trailer coming at the Super Bowl. Um I mean, I remember the last time we talked about it, though, was when they announced, because I think the original plan for Twister's was that Helen Hunt's character was going to be a part of the movie. But that's all completely gone now. I don't even know that they're going to be referencing the first movie in this. That's why it's not called Twister 2. It's just called Twisters. And it's not even called Twisters. A Twister story. No, it's just <laughs> Twisters, and they seem to be going in a different direction. That's a little bit surprising. All right, what's next? We got uh, Kyler Hoddick who says, uh, who decides which producers of a Best Picture nominee actually get an Oscar trophy? Is it the studio or academy? Thanks for all you do. The Producers Guild of America, when you're watching the credits, you know what? I, I actually made a video. Uh, give me one second, Jonathan. Let me see if I can pull this up. I made a video, an editorial video, this past summer uh, talking, about, uh, talking about what exactly a producer does. Okay, yeah, here, uh, bring bring this up if you can, Jonathan. So I made this video called What Does a Producer Do, right? And in this video, we talk about, we specifically talk about, even though there's a whole ton, you can read like 18 producers, executive producer, producer, associate producer, like all these producers, right? 
but there is somebody that will get what's called the PGA mark, right? When you're watching a trailer. And in this video, if you go and search for this video, we'll discuss what that PGA mark is. That mark is who tells you who the real actual producer of the film is. The one who will get handed the Oscar if their movie wins best picture at the Oscars. And it's somebody who actually does, because you can get, Rob, we've talked about this a lot. You can get an executive producer credit because let's say you're making a movie. I connect you. You reach out to me. John, you got any buddies with money? And I connect you with my millionaire buddy and my millionaire buddy gives you $500,000 to make your movie. I get an executive producer credit or, you know, you had lunch with the director one day to discuss possibilities and ideas. This has happened with Steven Spielberg a lot. You get an associate producer credit or an executive producer credit. Like you can get producer credits fairly easy sometimes, but then there is the actual producers, the one who actually put in the years of work to get this movie and pull it together. And they get what's called the, the PGA mark, the producer's mark. And when you see that in the credits, that's who gets the Oscar if the movie wins Best Picture. All right, great question. All right, what's next? Cassandra oh, and, and by the way, I'm sorry. Who decides who gets that producer's mark? It's the, um, uh, what's the name? It's the P, the, the PGA, yeah, the Producers P, yeah. Guild of America. They are the ones who decide who gets those marks. All right, g again, good question. What's next? Because Cinema says, interesting how people complain endlessly about supposedly needing to watch WandaVision and Miss Marvel to understand the Marvels, yet... I've seen no complaints about needing to watch Loki to understand Deadpool <laughs> 3, and I bet there will be a few, if any, at all, uh, <laughs> misogyny. Again, it is something that could very validly be a criticism, but as I, like I, I mentioned this earlier, as I watched the trailer, they did it in such a way where you, you don't even have to know the Loki series exists. The trailer itself Fully explained it. Hey, we're the Center Dimensional Police Force. We're recruiting you. We need you to come back and be a hero. You didn't have to watch. Whereas, like, say, with the, the Marvels, you're like, wait a minute. Who's this girl? Yeah. And, and who's that other girl? There's and no what? setup for those there characters in the Marvel. Like, it, it looks like the first the, shows you were lost. I watched Marvels again just to <clears> watch. And, and sure. I, I was looking at it going, there's huge chunks of that movie that mm. were clearly cut out. Because there's no setup for those characters. And you have to do that. You have to retell the vital information of what they're going to do. That's why they cast, instead of Owen Wilson, they brought <laughs> they gave gave you another actor. And if this teaser was like showing him walking down the hall with the TV, yeah, I'm working with a new crew, da 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 people would be like, who are these people? Who is he working with? I don't right. get it. And that's why when they first show up, they're going to be all, the TV is essentially a new character. Yeah. In the end, you know, for people and, who haven't and, seen you it. Know, I hear some people saying like this stupid thing. It's like, well, you know, it's it's not, even if it was confusing, it's not all that big of a deal just to go back and watch the Loki series. That's fucking idiotic. You should not expect an audience member to have to go and do six hours of homework. Well, and pay for to, Disney To Plus come and watch your movie. And, and that's where it. I thought the Deadpool trailer did a really good job. It's like, you know what? You can watch this and never even know that that Loki show exists, and it just feels like it's a part of the movie. Yes. And it worked. And they did not do that well with the Marvels or with Doctor Strange 2, with Wanda and everything she went through in WandaVision. They did, they did not do a good job of that then. They did a good job of it here. So credit words do. All right, what's next? Uh, Darth Wayne 97 says, Cassandra Nova, the villain in Deadpool 3. Again, just because it's somebody who's bald. Is it a possibility? Of course, it's a possibility. But it, it was somebody who's bald. Like, again, it could have been Obadiah Stane. Who did you mention? A moon dragon? It could have, or no, it could have been the ancient one. Well, I, the ancient I, one. I, he I, said I, the ancient one. Who's bald. Ancient one. But, but the thing is, you, Cassandra Nova is such a leap. That comes totally out of left field. A very inside baseball, too. And also, that's an X-Men villain. And now, and a big X-Men villain. So I don't know if they're going to do oh, that. Ritwig is saying it's Talos. Talos. It's Talos is back, back from the dead. All Somehow. right, what's next? Azaz says, love Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. Funny, violent, perfect amount of teaser trailer. I know uh, struggle to see how it can't hit the billion. It's got to be great. It's got to be Look, good. The, the, what I can guarantee is it's going to have a monstrous opening weekend. Yes. Whether it hits the billion dollar, like, I think it will, but that will depend, as Rob, as you always say, is it good? Is it good? The trailer looks great. 
But the movie's got to be good in yeah. order to hit a billion. Because if word of mouth, because you're gonna have a big opening weekend, but if word of mouth just then comes up and goes, eh, then people aren't gonna be rushing out to see it two or three times, and they're not gonna be grabbing their friends to come back and see it, and then it won't hit a billion, no matter how big the opening weekend is. But Rob, I am still standing that it will fairly easily hit the billion dollar mark how are you feeling about it now i think so too because it looks like it'll be wildly entertaining and i think i think first of all to get this movie made in the first place ryan reynolds he wasn't thinking about what was at stake in terms of the mcu because this was in he wanted to make this movie when he was making deadpool one and two anyway he wanted to get hugh jackman in from the beginning so he knew and they've been talking about what they were going to do if this were ever going to happen they knew now i think what they had to do was then incorporate the TVA and all this stuff. I mean, I think Ryan Reynolds was looking at the idea of this merger as as amazing comic fodder. So I think that this has been gestating for long enough that these writers, the writing team, and Ryan Reynolds and 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 uh, Hugh Jackman know exactly what they want to do here. And maybe I'm giving them more credit than credit is due, but I don't think so. I think we're going to get a real banger. All right, what's next? CJ says. With the success that Glenn Powell's last movie had at the box office, do you think Twisters has a shot? I'm a big Daisy Edgar Jones fan, and I hope it does well. Also, Deadpool is going to fix the MCU. Again, let's keep things in context, all right? If I go over to Box Office Mojo and we pull up... I'm going to have to go into the larger list here. We pull up Anyone But You. Where did it go? Right, It's number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Right anyone there. But You. It's made $170 million. Nuts. I can't believe it. Right? Amazing. Which, for the size of the movie, is great and all that kind of stuff. But take out how much it costs to make and just look at it from, from the amount of pop cultural impact it's had. Not a lot of people went to go see it. Right? I mean, it's, it's a good ROI. It's good return on investment. It did well for how much it costs. But mm -hmm. as far as overall pop cultural influence... Did a lot of people actually go see it? Yeah. And the act, the answer to that is not really. It was a good amount for what that movie is. Well, it's a but, yeah, romantic, the genre, the fact that yeah, a romantic comedy but again, was able to do this. From an overall pop culture, yeah. taking out how much the cost to make, did a ton of people no. actually go see it? It's not five hundred million. It's yeah, it's not a four hundred million, five hundred million dollar yeah. movie. It's we ain't not getting like, Black Adam numbers here. <laughs> yeah, but we're no not, one expected it to be. It is a surprise. <laughs> yeah, sure. So I, I mean, so it, so it's a success from a business point of view. It is a success, but I don't think we can look at it and say, well, clearly Glenn Powell, who I love, Glenn Powell, but we can't look at that number and say, well, clearly Glenn Powell is. This mega star. Yeah, it's not Matthew McConaughey numbers. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not willing to go there. Can he be that? Yes. But What's does amazing. this prove it you, is? I don't think so. Not yet. You know, his next movie he co-wrote with Richard Linklater. The oh, hit, yeah. Uh, that, Hitman. That, that little where he goes into the laundromat and everything. Uh, yeah. what's, what's the... It's called Hitman. Hitman. And, Hitman. And, yeah, that's right. And that's a good-looking trailer. It's also going direct to streaming. And if you look at look at the Beekeeper, look at how much Beekeeper is made, which <laughs> is... Uh, a shame, uh, it, 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 but it's also <laughs> it's an Amazon movie, right? And then Amazon's taking uh, uh, Roadhouse direct to streaming when it could have done Beekeeper numbers, which is a surprising hit. Got to go theatrical, man. Yep, absolutely. All right, all right. What's next? Uh, DZ Studios Deadpool three teaser was the only good thing about the Super Bowl. Also, boyfriend has shown me the scene <laughs> from uh, Last of Us Part Two. Just know my heart will never require, and I demand brutal justice. But you well, know what that's, okay, when you say, yeah. just take the phrase, I saw this thing, my heart will never recover, and I demand brutal justice. Sounds like you just watched the opening to John Wick. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I mean that in a good way. Because if you can get the audience on board with that, and now the audience becomes emotionally invested, it, it, I'm not saying they will pull it off, but I'm saying if they do, it, it, it could be very special. All right, what's next? Tyson Ackerstrom says, uh, hey, John and crew, so Deadpool 3 is scheduled to debut the same weekend as SDCC in July. That seems late for SDCC. I uh, think it'll have any effect on opening weekend box office. Zero. Absolute 100% zero impact. Uh, if and anything, more. <clears throat> there's two reasons it'll have zero impact. Number one, I have gone to San Diego Comic-Con and gone to a movie in the evening. If I, if, When there was a movie that I, not often, 
But when there was a re- movie I really wanted to see, guess what? There are movie theaters around there. I can, I can run out and check one out. But here's the bigger reason why it's going to have absolutely zero impact on the box office of Deadpool. This year, they're probably going to get about 100,000 people go to Comic-Con. If every single one of those people bought the American average of a ticket of $10 a ticket, that may equals $1 million of box office. Let me repeat that. If every single human being going to San Diego Comic-Con had instead stayed home and bought a ticket to go see Deadpool 3, Deadpool, it's going to take me a while to say Deadpool and Wolverine, but yeah. to see Deadpool 3, that would equal a grand total of $1 million. Yeah. Zero impact. Okay, so whatsoever. that's an impact on the opening, not overall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's just opening weekend. Because those people are going to go see it eventually. And I have a feeling they're going to be like, this is awesome. We can go to SECC. Uh, tonight we can go see Deadpool in San Diego somewhere. And then, you know what I mean? I, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> All right. I know. What's next? Uh, Josiah Barnhart says, uh, hi, all you beautiful people. Bob Marley's One Love looks great. He's a big fan of the uh, Kaya, so I was wondering what's your favorite stoner movie? Uh, can't go wrong with Cheech and Chung Up in Smoke. That's like the classic stoner movie. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Smoke. By the way, I I have grown kind of excited to see One Love. It's I'm actually seeing it, looking better and better. I'm seeing yeah. it on uh, Wednesday. Are you? Yeah. Uh, Ray and I will be going to see the one true movie that we've all been waiting for, Madam Web. Nice. On Wednesday, uh, but yeah, I'm dying to see the Thoughts Bob Marley. Thoughts and prayers. Movie. Um, I like Grandma's Boy, dude. Grandma's Boy. I was Boy about is, to say yeah. Grandma's Boy. I love Pineapple Express because it's a great send like up to the too. classic. Yeah, uh, you know, I don't love. I I like Pineapple Express, but you I don't love it. Love it, yeah. but I love Grandma's, Grandma's Boy. Grandma's Boy is awesome. Yeah, I, I so I think Grandma's Boy would be mine. You got one? Rob? 2001: A Space Odyssey. Oh, come on, best now. stoner movie ever made. Oh, you're th- okay. Not dude's, dude, where's my car? Oh. Changed my mind. Not dude, where's my car? Andy, All right. Andy says, fun fact, Deadpool was released eight years ago. That doesn't seem that long ago for the first Deadpool. Yeah, yeah it's, but man, I still remember wow. when that that first leak that Ryan Reynolds has since admitted he was the one who put it out. Uh, since that leak of the Deadpool footage got yeah. everything rolling I want to circle back and say, yeah, half-baked. Half-baked is a good one. <clears throat> That's a big one for a lot of people, yeah. All right, what's All next? Right. We got uh, Kill the Switch. Uh, will there be a ticket watch for DP3? I think so, yeah. I, I think we will absolutely do a ticket watch for Deadpool. Now, remember, it's still an R-rated movie. And I think only two... Well, only two R-rated films have ever made a billion dollars. Joker and what? You know, I'm going to have to take that back. Only one. Because because Oppenheimer, that's right, Oppenheimer never did cross a billion. So there's only been one billion dollar R-rated film. Um, so that will still, so I'm not expecting a $220 million opening for Deadpool, right? That being said, yes, definitely we'll be doing a ticket watch for Deadpool 3. Got to find out when the tickets will go on sale. I'm sure it's still a few months away. All right, what's next? Andy with a two-parter. I was disappointed at the SB58 because I was told that after the Chiefs... Oh, okay, Super Bowl. 58. Uh, after the Chiefs win, Travis would propose to Taylor, and Taylor <laughs> would endorse a candidate, thus fulfilling the prophecy of Taylor using her CIA superpowers. <laughs> These dumbass conspiracy theories were wrong again. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theorists and their... Crossbreeding with cousin with first cousins. I'm not. I'm not going to go into that very much. But <laughs> well, we won't go into that. But yeah, we can say it. It'd, <laughs> they'd make a great first couple, though. <laughs> they they would. They would make a great. You could first you couple. could run either one of them as a candidate. <laughs> All right. What's next? James Welsh says after seeing the Wicked trailer, which movie do you now think wins the Thanksgiving weekend? Moana two or Wicked? Moana two. I still lean on. Probably. It, mo- remember, it is not a small thing. Out of all the movies, theatrical, direct-to-streaming, out of all the movies that were on streaming in 2023, the number one streamed movie of the year was a... How old is Moana? Yeah, what year it did up. it come out? Uh, 2016. Wow. Was an eight... Well, at the time, seven-year-old Disney film was the... Number one streamed movie of 2023. Moana will win the box office that weekend. 
but Wicked, listen, don't underestimate how popular that, that Broadway show is. People have been very excited about Wicked. And I think once they get more into the marketing campaign, they show more publicly what they showed us at CinemaCon last year. People are going to get more excited. It's going to do really well. But I, I think Moana wins that weekend. All right, what's next? Uh, seconds from Disaster. I heard everything always points out that Deadpool uh, was laying in Hulk's bed from Ragnarok. Uh, if him and Logan go to that timeline, do you think he will uh, get that classic Savage Hulk versus Wolverine fight? No, you're not. No, they look. Look, they're going to put a lot into this movie, but it's inevitable. Whenever we come up to a new Marvel movie, everybody starts thinking of every five million possible things that could happen in this movie. No, they're not going to set up a Wolverine versus Hulk fight in this movie. I mean, that is something I have been waiting my whole life to see. <laughs> well, we I think get... my very first comic ever, my first comic book ever was a Wolverine versus Hulk fight. It was either that or the Thing versus Hulk, but they were both ones that I had very, very early. And but... I've been waiting almost my whole and I think it would be Deadpool wanting, it, it'll be Deadpool going, you know, you know, it'd be great. <laughs> and he'd be the one to say it. It's just too much. It. it would, it would, there would be no story. To yeah. It. How would be, they fit oh, it in? Oh, here's a big green guy. Let's fight him. And you don't do that with, with something that's going to be like an all time classic moment. You don't just drop it in rat randomly. I don't think they would. I think scene. they'd lead up to it, but I could see it happening. But, but that there's so <laughs> much to do in this movie. Do you think Hulk is really going to be a major storyline of Deadpool three? No chance. No chance. I don't know. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but no chance. I mean, I look, they're leaning into the yellow suit. They've they've given us the yellow suit. And and I think that from there, I'll bet you they had a checklist of things they wanted to put in this movie. I bet Hugh Jackman wanted things in this movie. And the only time that we could get this. But a Hulk versus Wolverine is something you you build a movie around that. You build up to that. It's not a random Hey, now we're jumping between 50 yeah, different realities, I know. and we just happen to jump into this one, and Hulk is there, and we're going to have a fight. I mean, it's, nah. I don't nah. know. I mean, anything's possible. I have nah. no idea. I'm just thinking that that's the kind of thing that I could think that they would have come up with going, you know what we should have in this movie? I mean, it'd be, it would be as, as logical as saying Wolverine and Deadpool have to team up to fight the the two Frozen sisters. But what I about what what about what about if it's a variant Hulk? A again, Hulk from a different again, universe. That's such a rant. Okay, you know what? Sucky Marvel would do that. Like Marvel that sucks would do that. Like just throwing him random shit to throw spaghetti at a wall that doesn't have real narrative. What purpose. if Ed Norton's in this movie? <laughs> Gosh. Again, it would be for five minutes and it would be just a random nothing thing. So it, it, it's like Wolverine fighting the Hulk is something you have to put I agree. spotlight on and build up to. They're not just going to throw it in like a throwaway idea. Like having Jen Garner pop up as Electra, you can do that because it's not super relevant. It's not super important. I'm I can't wait to see it, but like Wolverine versus Hulk, that's not something you treat with just a quick five minutes. Just throw this in there, like unless a it's a great like a moment that they lead up to somehow in the movie that they have to get past him. Right, but we've seen nothing that suggests to us over the last two years that Hulk is playing a major role in this film, like nothing. It, it, I mean, it's not Deadpool and Wolverine and Hulk. But what if it's like a Juggernaut thing? If you're using Juggernaut, fine, but it can't be Hulk. No, no, no but I mean, Hulk's if Hulk important. is used like Juggernaut is in Deadpool 2. But, but then you're throwing Hulk away. Like, you can't treat Wolverine versus Hulk the way they just did with Deadpool or they, they did with it's true versus Juggernaut, right? Juggernaut's not to the MCU. Well, first of all, he doesn't even exist in the MCU. But you can't just do a throwaway thing like that. Like, you have to give that one more respect, yeah. I think, than this is going to be. I but think it would be too forced. <laughs> All right, what's next? Cody Hunt says, first team uh, to to lead the league in drops, penalties, and without a 1,000 receiver to win the Super Bowl. Unbelievable, never a doubt. Go Chiefs. As long as your opponents hand you the games, right. sure. As long as your <laughs> opponent just basically sits down and says, we give up here, you take the game, then yeah, you can do that. It's true. Again, not taking anything away from Patrick Mahomes. This dude's a stud of the highest degree. Best player, him and Christian McCaffrey, best players in the NFL. Obviously played two very different positions. But, uh, I mean, so take nothing away. This dude's a freaking wizard. He's a wizard, Harry. Patrick uh -huh. Mahomes is something magical. So take nothing away from him. But this team is not actually all that good. They literally, I mean, they're good. 
but they're not as good as the Kansas City Chiefs of the last couple of years. And literally the last two games, they've had teams just hand them the game. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how good or not good they are next year. Because if they come out next year and just roll, run the table yeah. and beat the crap out of everybody, great. I, I think we're going to see them take another step down next year. But who knows? We got a big offseason. They can make some trades. They could draft well. I mean, who knows? We'll have to see. But I'm taking, despite the fact that I'm saying these other teams have just handed them the game, that is not to take anything away from how great Patrick Mahomes has played. Even though he only scored 17 points last game and only 16 points in regulation no this game. But whatever. All right. What's next? All right. You want to take some time for some uh, members here? We're over time, but you know what? Let's take a couple. All right. Matt says, uh, Ape's trailer was so good. Probably my favorite out of the trailers. Yeah. I have to agree. Now, granted, it had the advantage of being the second trailer. They already put out their first trailer a while ago to get that one out of the way. The second trailer is supposed to be your meteor trailer. So, but still, yeah, I, I thought it was the best trailer of the Super Bowl. I agree. All right, what's next? CJ Reber says, the Wicked trailer definitely won me over. <laughs> Everyone looks great. I'm so happy to see Ariana in a lead role. And that familiar music note at the end gave me chills. Um, it looks really good. I am not its target audience, and they have got me excited to see this movie. Me too. Guys, I'm telling you what, though, in this in this presentation that they did at CinemaCon, this 15-minute presentation they did at CinemaCon last year, there's this one moment where, like, they're walking to Oz, right? And you see these rolling, beautiful, gorgeous landscaped hills with flowers and all this kind of stuff. And then the producer comes on. Oh, yeah, no CGI in there. We literally brought in, like, I think, you can correct, we'll be corrected, but I think it was in the neighborhood they said, we literally brought in three million flowers. And we're all like, oh, my God. Yeah, it insane. And it just, guys, they didn't show you much in this trailer, but when they start showing you the sweeping landscapes and the big wider shots, it looks gorgeous this film i don't know who the cinematographer was but this film look or the art direction or whatever but it is stunning stunning to look at i i can't i'm actually getting really excited to see the movie all right one more question because we're way over time today what's the sure. next one? uh the blackout says is it safe to say that constantine two with keanu is dead in the water I haven't heard any news since i've never believed it would ever i've never believed it will happen even when keanu reeves came out and said we're gonna do it i so listen the reality is we could find out it goes into production tomorrow or it's dead on the vine. I, I've never really thought it was going to get made. I don't really see a reason to make it. So I'm going to guess it's done. But, 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 but I say that acknowledging that I'm cognizant of the fact that in three weeks may, we may find out it goes into production. Rob, do you think not should they make it, not would you want to see it, but do you think they're actually going to make this movie? I don't think so. Although I'd like to see it because I quite enjoy the first Constantine. Against I, I, I was so adamantly opposed to his casting, but I when I saw the film, I really, really, really liked the movie, and that's a big credit to Francis Lawrence. All right, guys. And with that down, that'll do it for today's over runtime episode of the John Campion Show podcast. Thank you so much for being here and making the show part of your day. Big special thank you to all you guys who sent in those questions. Number one, because you gave us interesting things to talk about. Number two, you supported our channel as you did it and all of us involved with the show. Thank you guys so very much for that support. Uh, don't forget to come on back and join us again tomorrow. Programming note, we've got an open mic a little bit later this afternoon. If you want to just come back and casually chill out, we're just going to hang out, talk about stuff. If you want to come back and join me for that later this afternoon, that'll be going up a little bit later today. Keep your eye on the channel. I want to thank the guys in the room with me, Mr. Ray Ora. Happy birthday, Olive. Uh, that, that's his sister, my sister-in-law, Olive, and Anne and Ray's sister. Uh, Jonathan Boyko. See you guys later. Writer, director, producer, Robert Meyer Burnett. Hulk versus <laughs> My name's John Campia, and until next time, my friends, pegging. <laughs>